and poised, this prolific Heisman Trophy hopeful is running and passing his way through the record book. For the second straight season, Craig's accurate arm has accounted for more than 2,000 yards. For all intent and purposes, he is the Auburn offense. His pride a bit bruised after last week's loss at Florida. See if this multifaceted talent can come back and lead Auburn to victory at Arkansas tonight. been raining heavily for the past couple of hours here in Fayetteville, Arkansas, as the 11th ranked Auburn Tigers come calling on the Razorbacks. In the SEC West, Auburn is sitting atop the charts and sitting pretty while Arkansas is sprinting up a down escalator. Temperature right now 58 degrees. It has been raining heavily. They expect it to lighten up as the evening wears on. Hi, everybody. I'm Charlie Steiner, and we welcome you to Northwestern Arkansas. And these are an angry bunch of Auburn Tigers you're going to be watching tonight, coming off their 24-10 loss to Florida last week when Damian Craig was sacked nine times. Simply put, if you can beat Damian Craig, you can beat Auburn because he is responsible for 78% of their total offense. Joined, as usual, tonight by Todd Christensen, and with this weather being what it is it could be a factor tonight certainly could with regards to damian craig he is somebody that's a little bit frustrated as well as his teammates offensive coordinator rodney allison said this is the saddest team he'd ever been around after the loss to florida and damian craig did not exactly look that excited coming into this contest this evening take a look at that face he's a little bit depressed and not all that upbeat Big question for Auburn tonight is the resilience of both the team and Damian Craig tonight against the Razorbacks. We've got a cold front moving through Arkansas tonight. It's been rather chilly around Arkansas these days. Fans and the media no longer seem to think that Ford has a better idea. Well, Danny Ford, you'd have to question some of his motivational tactics as to what he has been saying in the media. First, I don't know how to get our football team ready to play right now, and certainly that does not breed a lot of confidence where the team is concerned. We have to wait and see if our receivers show up to play this week. I'm sure those guys are excited to read about that. And finally, we're not having a whole lot of fun. Well, certainly college football is about fun. Arkansas wants to get back on the winning track this evening against Auburn. It is homecoming here at Arkansas, and it's raining on their parade. The Razorbacks, though, are ready. ESPN 2's presentation of College Football. Adam Lee, and we welcome you back to soggy Fayetteville. And while we have the opportunity, let's introduce you to the third member of our family down on the field, Chris Marlowe. Chris? Well, Charlie, speaking of the Bowdens, this is a family that's having a lot of fun right now. And why not? They're all winning. Bobby Bowden still undefeated in conference. Meanwhile, Terry Bowden doing a nice job in the SEC West at 3-1. and one. And Tommy, despite uh, tonight's score, 3-0 and, oh, and working miracles in the Conference USA. This is also a family that stays in touch. Each week, the three of them exchange game fills, films and then critique each other's performances. Now, this week, we talked to Terry Bowden, and he was joking that, uh, that he was the third Bowden in the family in terms of total offense. Look at the numbers. Florida State, Tulane, and Auburn at 29 points a game. So if you're a football fan tonight, watch closely. You could see a Bobby or a Tommy play in the Terry offense. It's certainly all in the family, Charlie. Back Stay to you. Stay dry tonight, Chris. And one of those uh, points in the statistics there, bottom line is father knows best. Arkansas won the toss, but they deferred in this foul weather, so they're going to kick it off. And Mark Keith Cooper is three yards deep in the end zone. He'll put a knee to the turf. And now let's meet the, uh, the Auburn offense. Damian Craig coming off a poor performance last week. Only 18 of 34 for 187 yards. He was sacked nine times. His two favorite wide outs are Bailey and Goodson. And between them, they have made 67 catches this year. Victor Riley, they say, is, has the potential to be a first-round NFL draft choice. He at right tackle. Auburn is averaging just about 85 yards per game on the ground. But Damian Craig has been throwing the ball with reckless abandon. 2,057 yards, and here you go. First play of the game. It's a running play. Devontre Carter is across the 30 to the 35-yard line. Defensively, four. 
for Arkansas, Melvin Bradley, very quick at the nose guard. He is their leading tackler among the down linemen. C.J. McLean is a leading tackler overall for Arkansas. And in the secondary, Marcus Campbell has been nursing a hamstring. And with a wet field, that could be a factor tonight. There was a penalty on the very first play of the game. Good looking first play, however. Take a look, take a look, take a look down here at the bottom. It appeared that that's the Geno James is the one that got caught holding. Watch, watch as he cuts up field. You can see tugs on it just a little bit. And as a result, that's what the official saw through the flag. Boy, those are frustrating, I know. The tight end, I got a few of those myself back 100 years ago. Geno James was really scorched last week at Florida, responsible for four of the nine sacks. And on the first play from scrimmage, a 10-yard holding penalty. Here's Craig's first pass of the game. It's complete out to the 15-yard line to Hicks four. One of the things that they want to do is to avoid Mel Bradley, the great pass rusher of Arkansas. They're going to roll a little bit right, move out of the pocket. That's from your left to your screen comes Bradley, and they go away from him. Settle down with the easy throw with the hook pattern. Drop him in his tracks at the 17, but that does give Craig some confidence. Able to throw here in this wet weather. Mel Bradley, boy, went from nose guard to defensive end. This is a guy they move around a lot. Just amazing quickness for a guy 265. He had 89 tackles last year. He was the first defensive lineman to lead Arkansas in tackles since 1981. Second down and 13 yards to go. Craig fires, completes it to Hicks four, has some room on the sideline, wrestled out of bounds at the 32, and that's a first down, a pick up the 15. And Andrea Moss, the cornerback, slipped a little bit on that play. The protection is outstanding for Damian Craig. In the shotgun, takes his three steps back, has plenty of time, looks left, drills the ball <clears throat> right into Poor's chin, actually. He does a nice job of bodying the ball and trapping it. Take a look here at the front five and what they're able to do. You can see Bradley on the bottom. <clears throat> Geno James pushes him out to the outside. He wins that battle clearly. And so it's the first first down of the ball game at the 32-yard line. Markeith Cooper is in the backfield, and he gets the handoff. And he's going the other way. It was a fake, and it's complete out to Karsten Bailey across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Fake me out. David Barnett comes in on the corner blitz, and that was really a big mistake on his part. He's got to go after the quarterback. Watch to your... Watch the right of your screen right here. Now take a look. Why go after the fullback? You're not going to get him anyway. Go after the quarterback, and if he goes with the fake, you can get him. Instead, Craig shows his escapability and throws the ball nicely a little bit behind, but a good-looking catch by Bailey to reach back for it. For Karsten Bailey, his 34th catch of the year, a pickup of nine. It's second down and less than one. Out of the eye formation, the freshman, DeMontre Carter. He gets into a pile. Beasley, the up back. Well, Damian Craig is somebody that's establishing all the standards for the Auburn War Eagles in passing. Take a look there. Passing yards per game, completions, TD passes. He could arguably be maybe their best quarterback in history, but of course you'd get some argument from the people who remember 1971 when Pat Sullivan was the Heisman Trophy winner. Patrick Nix was also a pretty good quarterback at Auburn, and it is those three who hold all of the quarterbacking records at Auburn. The pitch out to Devontre Carter, and Carter loses a couple. Number one to number one, but in this case, Randy Garner, a little bit bigger body, is able to take on the smaller tailback and drop him for a loss. Miles Aldridge, the defensive coordinator, said, first of all, it's going to be a great night for football, regardless of what it was. But he, he felt that the key was what's going to happen in the pit. And clearly that time, Garner is able to get off his block and drop DeMontre for a loss. If Arkansas can keep that up, they got a shot. The strength of the Arkansas defense is his front three. Anderson, Bell, Hale, and Melvin Bradley as well. And here is Carter. He's in trouble. He throws across the middle, and it's complete to Tyrone Goodson at the 45-yard line. And that's a pickup of about four yards, but still third and very long. Craig shows a great job of mobility here and sense. Take a look now as he's going to go to his right, feeling from the back side. Just at the last minute, he's going to be able to get it off before D.J. Cooper goes past him. He doesn't even go down. 
great poise and throwing across his body. A lesser quarterback can say, please don't do this, please don't do this, but you got somebody like Craig able to make the moves that he can, he gets away with it. Third right and eight play. at the 45. Craig fires, completes it at the 45-yard line to Tyrone Goodson, and that's enough for a first down. Part of what's happening here is that the footing is really hurting the Arkansas defense. They try and come with six or seven on the blitz, but they just cannot get in the face of Craig. And the result of being in the shotgun... Here, you're going to see some people come. Here they come on a stunt, but look at the time he has. Even if they can't pick anybody up, they can still run the deep hook route, and Craig's able to deliver the ball. That's the advantage of the shotgun when it's run well. He is five for five for 44 yards already. Damian Craig... A six foot and three quarter inch senior from Pritchard, Alabama, and out of the shotgun. Firing long over the middle, and it's complete to Goodson inside the 30 to about the 27 yard line. A pickup of 18. Zach Pater with the tackle. Isn't this interesting, Charlie, when you try and guess body language at the beginning of the game? We took a look at Craig's face. It looked like he was bored, looked like he was bothered by the rain, looked like he was going to have a hard time getting started. Eh, then again, maybe not. He's now six for six, delivering the nice deep in route. Look at that, right on the money. It is first down and 10 at the 27-yard line. Craig out of the shotgun. We're going to see that mostly tonight. This time, the handoff is to the fullback, Craig Beasley. Flag on the play as he's run out of bounds. Clearly a holding call. That's going to come back, especially when the official wanders all the way over to do it himself, and that's the referee. Holding on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. The SEC officials tonight headed up by referee Mac Gentry. Victor Riley, the one who everyone is talking about, about going to the NFL, is the one that gets caught. Watch the right tackle here as he pulls out. Now watch him extend the arms and just hang on to Garner. That's the official season. Of course, when the shirt starts to come down over the shoulder pad, that usually is a dead giveaway. Victor Riley, 6'5", 313 pounds. And offensive coordinator Rodney Allison was saying that he has all the tools to make a standout. NFL player. So it's first down and 21. The line of scrimmage now back at the 38-yard line. Six for six as Karsten Bailey with the catch. Let's go now to Mike Adamley, Mike. All right, Charlie, another SEC game of note. Kentucky against Georgia between the hedges. Tim Couch trying to rally his troops and does so, rolling to his right and finding Craig Geist in the end zone. They missed the extra point. They trail by four, 249 remaining. We are going to see Tim Couch in Kentucky next week against LSU at this time. Interesting to watch that throw once again throwing against the body. You only get away with that if you're good at it. And both two pretty good-looking quarterbacks just did it. Second down, nine yards to go. Craig steps up, he's gonna run with it. Breaks a tackle, coming to the near side, 20 and run out of bounds at about the 19 by Kenoy Kennedy. One of the things that Rodney Allison, the offensive coordinator, talked about was Craig's maturity. Take a look at the sense that he has in the pocket, knowing when he's got to get out of there. It looks like Bradley might have him, but no. He shakes him off, cuts to the outside, knows where his blockers are, and gets out of bounds. That's the maturity factor that Craig didn't have over the last couple of years that he has now. Third down and three yards to go. Some wholesale changes on the defensive side of the ball for Arkansas. See if they can stop the hemorrhaging here on this very first series. Damian Craig has been pretty near perfect. And the pass is complete inside the 15-yard line. The, um, the back judge came in and said no. Initially, it appeared that he made the catch from the back and watch, and, and when he hits the ground, take a look, he has the ball there. there he, but, but the problem is, is can the ground cause it? That's the issue. Did he have possession? The back judge says no, so it's going to be fourth and three. And so on fourth down, Jared Holmes is on for a field goal try. Holmes on the year is only three out of five. And this will be a 37-yard field goal. 
Hash mark to the left. This would be his longest of the year. Good. And so Auburn gets on the board first with 8.42 to go in the first quarter. 3-0 Tigers. Talked about going three for five, but one of the issues here is that he gets it when it counted, and the reaction of the coach says it all. This drive was not in vain. ESPN2 presentation of college football is brought to you by Audi and the class to drive A4. Get ready for the ride of your life. And by Keeps Your Own Life, America's never bitter beer. What did he say? So Auburn on a 12-play, 60-yard drive that took 6 minutes and 18 seconds has the early 3-0 lead, and the kickoff will be a touchback. 68% of his kicks have been this year. Very impressive. Now let's meet the offense of the struggling Arkansas Razorbacks. Clint Sterner, in his last two games, has had three picks and only two touchdowns. Anthony Eubanks. Stayed in Fayetteville this summer to get into the best shape of his career in the offensive line, anchored by the junior, Brandon Burlesworth, at 6'3 and 291 pounds. They need to get a running game going. They're averaging just 48 and a half yards per game on the ground all year. At this rate, they'll be lucky to get 500 yards on the ground for the season. A handoff straight ahead, Eric Branch, and he gets maybe a couple of yards. Defensively now for Auburn. Jimmy Brumbaugh is the guy you want to watch. He leads with five sacks. He leads all down linemen on Auburn with 57 tackles. But the interior linebackers make this defense go. Neal and Spikes, the two leading tacklers on the team. And in the secondary, Brad Ware had two interceptions last week, had two interceptions last year against Arkansas. On second down and eight at the 22, out of the eye, Branch is the tailback. And here's Branch, and he's got some running room right up the gut. Eric Branch across the 35 to the 37-yard line. That's a pickup of 16 yards. Branch cuts back against the grain. One of the disadvantages we've talked about is with team speed, you're going to go right after directly to the point of attack. Spikes gets run completely out of the play, and Branch right there. Instead of running over the man, if he could cut to the sidelines, he had a chance to go a lot longer, but probably he was so excited to see that gaping hole that you made reference to that, hey, man, I'm just going someplace. Six feet, 234 pounds. First and 10, first first down to the ball game for Arkansas. And from the I formation, Branch gets nothing, and he loses three on the play. Here's Mike Adamley. Charlie Steiner, perhaps the Georgia Bulldogs, putting the finishing touches on Kentucky here. Robert Edwards up the middle, 44 yards in all. He won't stop until he gets to the end zone. It put the Bulldogs up by 10 late in the game. Guys? Charlie, I remember two years ago, Robert Edwards started the season. First four games, do you remember that? He started the game at like 160 yards a game, was leading the nation, rushing and scoring, and hurt his foot. Never quite been the same. It's good to see him run like that. Maybe he's going to get it back. Second down and 13 yards to go at the 35-yard line. And from the shotgun, Rod Stinson is brought down behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of three more yards on the play. You documented Brumbaugh, and this is a great play because Brumbaugh should not be able to get that from the backside. And one of the reasons why Arkansas has struggled is their inability to block backside or foreside, for that matter. As you can see, yards per play and yards per game. Charlie, as you documented, if they only ended up with the 500 yards, that would be the worst that they'd had in their history. And that's something that they're terribly proud about, obviously. 49-year-old Danny Ford has enjoyed far better times than these. On third and 14. Sterner firing. And he completes it. Very close to the first down to Anthony Eubanks. And they're going to probably have to measure this thing. And from here, it looks like he's got it. Got a generous spot there. It looked to me like he was a little bit short. Eubanks, of course, the star receiver for Arkansas. He has a chance to break all of the club records and yardage and everything else. Those numbers right there that you're taking a look at, he had, over the last two games, he has really struggled. He's only had four catches. Last week, 
against South Carolina. Only two catches for nine yards. That's a man that really has to come up big for Arkansas to be successful. Hence one of the reasons why Danny Ford made the point he did about, hey, what's the deal? Where, about, where are our wide receivers? Well, certainly Eubanks came up big in this situation. Here he's going to come... Here he's going to come across on the on the deep route. Excuse me, excuse me. It was the in route right here by Eubanks who slides and makes the catch. The ball about a foot off the ground. That was a good looking catch by Eubanks. Eubanks had five catches for 85 yards last year against Auburn, and that's his first of the night. Rod Stinson can't get back to the line of scrimmage. Loses a couple because Takeo Spikes is right there to greet him. Number 55. Takeo Spikes is the man there. The Butkus down to the 10 Butkus award possibilities, leading the team with 75 tackles. Last week against Florida, Florida ran more than they usually do. Of course, Fred Taylor, I believe, had over 30 carries. Spikes had 18 tackles in that contest against the Eagles. That was a career high. Second down, 11. And from the eye, Stinson is the tailback. Nathan Norman is standing in front of him. And here is Stinson looking to cut. And he's not going to gain anything. He'll lose a couple of more yards. Ricky Neal, the other half of that Spikes-Neal combination. Neal and Spikes, they call Team 105 because Neal wears number 50, Spikes wears 55, and they're the two leading tacklers. Oh, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Added right up. Neal's a good looking. He reminds me a little bit in his physique at 5'11 and 230 of a guy who played pretty good for the Bears, a fellow named Singletary. 15 tackles for him last week against Florida. And there is Takeo Spikes. 75 tackles for Spikes, 67 for Neal. Here's Sterner to throw off his back foot down over the middle. It's incomplete. The intended receiver was Emmanuel Smith, but he was double covered at the 25-yard line. One of the things now that Arkansas, the very thing <clears throat> that Kay Stevenson talked about is happening that they did not want to happen, and that's coming up third and long. And there's a penalty. It's against Arkansas, and it was holding. Now, certainly they're going to refuse it and make them punt here, is my guess. Holding offense, the third down. Well, once again, <clears throat> not the first or last time that I've been wrong. This shows how futile the, or frustrating the offense has been for Arkansas. Auburn says to themselves, hey, forget fourth down and punting. We want to push him back another 10 yards because we don't believe that they can get that 10 yards back. Shows the confidence they have in their defense and the frustration they sense on the other side of the ball. Offensive coordinator Kay Stevenson, who was Steve Spurrier's back up at Florida in 1966, the year in which Spurrier won the Heisman Trophy. And so on third and 30, whistles blow and flags fly. Offensive line rocked back a little bit too soon. Both, both tackles, in fact. Dead ball, false start, offense, third down. And so now it is third down. And 35 yards to go. Terry Bowden in his 54th game at Auburn. 49 of those games, he has come into the ball game with a ranked team. And he inherited a team that was on probation. What a remarkable job he has done. And here's Sterner. Smashed down at the 12-yard line. Bobby Daffin, an outside linebacker. Marcus Clavel, the right tackle, just can't deal with him right here. And part of the frustration talked about by the offensive people for Arkansas was the inability of their young tackles to protect. In that situation, they just couldn't do it. And Bobby Daffin comes from the outside and absolutely pulverizes Sterner. Sterner had no idea that he was coming. When was the last time you saw a fourth and 46 and it not be a typo? Nice punt. That was some punt by Matt Waite. Fielded by Markeith Cooper, and Cooper is into Arkansas territory at the 49. 51-yard punt, a 16-yard return. In the midst of turmoil, the Arkansas players decided to have a meeting 
without coaches. And according to one newspaper report, it uh, got a little bit ugly. A defensive player got up and said that the offense was playing like something even Cowboys wipe off their boots. An offensive lineman responded, sit down and shut up or I'm going to rearrange your face. A good way to start off a meeting. Everything was aired out and apparently the Razorbacks were ready to play. We'll see. First and Bailey couldn't hold on to the ball at the 37 yard line. That'll set up a second down and 10 situation. And Auburn's opting to go here with their no huddle, trying to create some problems. Look at the arm, goes right through the arms of C.J. McClain. Bailey just couldn't hold on. At the 49 yard line of the Arkansas Razorbacks, Damian Craig, who lives out of the shotgun with trips to the left this time. Flag on the play, they'll never get the playoff as the whistles blow. Part of the problem, as was documented by Chris, is that the dissension on the team is indicative of how frustrating both sides are with one another. Hit ball, ball start, offense, five-yard penalty, second down. And that can certainly be a divisive factor because everybody's always talking about that there's no I in team, but when you start talking about, well, we as special teams guys are doing our job or we as D linemen are doing our job, that's counterproductive. That just isn't good. Well... It's easy to point the finger at one another because Arkansas ranks dead last offensively in the SEC and dead last defensively in the SEC. And they're still three and three. Meanwhile, here's Auburn, second down and 15. And again, whistles blow and flags fly. And Damian Craig has some unkind words. C.J. McClain. That, that, that's not somebody he wants to get in it with. Mm -hmm. C.J. McClain is probably the best defender along with Melvin Bradley on Arkansas. Offense, still second down. And he is a tough, tough guy. And Damian Craig is not happy with his troops. That man right there, Dennis Winston, the linebacker coach for Arkansas, former Pittsburgh Steeler during their Super Bowl years, said it's not a matter of whether or not he's going to play at the next level. It's how much money he's going to make. That's how much he thinks of that young man. And the question about McLean all along has been his ability to discipline himself. On second down and 20. At their own 41. Frank fires and completes it to Karsten Bailey at the 47-yard line. Once again, here's Mike Adamley. Charlie and Todd, a upset brewing out in the Palouse, Arizona's Ortiz Jenkins matching Washington State's Ryan Leaf. Touchdown for touchdown. This one, 34 yards to Brad Brennan. They both have three, but the Wildcats have the seven-point lead, guys. Uh, Pac-10 is wide open, isn't it? What are we talking about? The back? Isn't this the first time in, what, 30, 40 years Washington State's been in the top 10, something like that? Apparently, they're not going to be there for long. Uh, that score holds up on third down and eight. Going long and incomplete. Intended for Tyrone Goodson. Man for man was the free safety, Kanoi Kennedy. Outstanding coverage. The protection is good once again despite the blitz because this is what Auburn wants. Auburn wants him to come with six and seven men because that means he's got single coverage. Not really bothered there at the end. You can see looking downfield and Kennedy stride for stride with the faster man. Free, free, uh, free safety, he's not somebody who is notorious for his man-for-man -man coverage, but he was step-for-step -step with Goodson. Jared Holmes with his 42.1 putting average. There's a flag on the play. Boy, oh boy, Arkansas has got to hope it's against Auburn simply because of the fact that what are you doing? Fair catching the ball, Corey Nichols, on the five-yard line. Illegal substitution against the receiving team. Uh-oh. Well, Arkansas will be all the way back at its own five-yard line. Danny Ford's Razorbacks have their backs against the goal line. 3-0 Auburn, and the Razorbacks have 95 yards of real estate in front of them. Come you back to Fayetteville, Arkansas, and for a weather update, here's Chris Doppler Marlowe. Well, good news. If you're in the stadium, the storm has passed, the rain has stopped, the parka hoods are off, and it's an ideal night for football, especially the sideline reporter. Back to you. <laughs> I suspect that it is. Of course, this game began 
in a drenching downpour. And, of course, that miserable weather out toward Colorado and uh, through the Plains states moving in this direction. It's not obviously cold enough for that kind of weather here, but the temperature has dropped precipitously this day. And with all that precipitation, of course. It's... Boy, those are them's big words. You can explain them to me later. On first and ten at the five-yard line, Branch and Norman in the I formation. And here's Eric Branch. And Branch gains maybe four on the play. But this is what they need to do, Charlie. The last couple of first downs, they're either going nowhere or getting negative yardage. I mean, that's actually... <laughs> I don't want to, I'm really not trying to be funny here when I say that's actually a big play. It affords them an opportunity now to come up and give Case Stevenson a chance to work his magic. And of course, Case Stevenson was brought into the Arkansas football program to put together some kind of a passing attack that had been lacking here. And the handoff, no gain for Rod Stinson to about the 10. It'll be third down and five. And the difficulty is that Danny Ford has historically been a running coach. So it was not as if Kay Stevenson was greeted by the head coach with open arms. No, he wasn't. And, and certainly when you have the pedigree that Danny Ford had in Clemson, a number of ACC titles, a national championship back in 1980, he's got to say to himself, well, you know what, I, I've done some pretty good things. But again, I think this is what Florida has done to the SEC. It's forced people to have to go to the air to catch up and try and get instant points. On third down and four. Handoff. Stinson. Did he make the first down? He had to get to the 15. And it looks like he did. It will depend on the mark of the ball. I think he's got the first down. Marcus Washington made the tackle. Nice call. You go out of the shotgun. Everybody's anticipating that it's going to be a pass. Take a look right here with the quick handoff. A play that you saw the Buffalo Bills run an awful lot out of the K-gun. And, of course, K. Stevenson being from Buffalo, even though he is pre-K-gun. Stole that one a little bit, and it worked well for the Razorbacks. Rod Stinson, who has uh, missed several games with a bad elbow, came back last week, played well, and getting a lot of action tonight. Branches now. He fumbles the ball. It's picked up by Auburn. That's going to be a touchdown. Picked up by Marcus Washington. Brumbaugh comes with the big hit right under the chin, and it appeared that he just didn't have a hold of the ball. But give Brumbaugh credit, he separated him from the ball. Jared Holmes, the extra point. So Jared Holmes now for the extra point try. And it's good. So the fumble recovery and the rumble of 13 yards by Marcus Washington has given Auburn the early 10 to nothing lead. Thanks in large part to the hit laid on branch by Jimmy Brumbaugh. Remember the first play of the game where they got the big yardage cutting back against the grain? Well, they went one too often. Brumbaugh not only comes under the chin, but he's able to get a little bit of the ball with his shoulder pad. And the result is Washington is able to pick up the gift and go in for six. When he cuts back against the grain, you can see Brumbaugh down here is not fooled. He's not pursuing the play anymore. He stays at home, as they say, waiting for the running back. And there's the hit right there, textbook. Washington picks it up, and now it's a 10-0 game. Danny Ford said he needed to play a near flawless game against Auburn. But Auburn has taken advantage of its turnover opportunities and converted eight touchdowns out of 14 opposition turnovers. Well, again, you got to give an awful lot of credit to the Auburn defense. They got burned early with that one cutback, and since that time, the lanes have been filled by defensive linemen and linebackers. They've been much more disciplined. It is better to give than it is to give away. Hubert Loudermilk. Loudermilk down at the 20-yard line. And it is first down and 10 for the Arkansas Razorbacks. ESPN2 continues its college football coverage tonight. As soon as we're done, 
The Air Force Falcons visit San Jose State Spartans as soon as we're done at 9 o'clock Eastern time here on the Deuce. You know, if Morgan hadn't been hurt, the quarterback for Air Force, I think they'd have a shot now being undefeated the rest of the season. That was a real blow for them. Meanwhile, Arkansas trying to get over a couple of blows here early in the first quarter, trailing 10 nothing at the 20-yard line. Here's Sterner back to throw. He's in trouble, throws, and he completes it to the tight end, Joe Dean Davenport to the 32. That's a first down. Joe Dean Davenport is going to come on the crossing route. Six foot seven, you see him right here coming across. Now he has to extend himself a little bit to make this catch. Otherwise, look, he had some room to run. There's nobody within 10 yards of it. Davenport with just his fifth reception of the year. As you well know, pulling a calf is not a good thing in football. Pulling a calf for Joe Dean Davenport is a very good thing. <laughs> his parents own a chicken and beef farm, and he is prone to help the birth of calves. Defense has been the name of the game for Auburn here in the first quarter, and a sack of Clint Sterner by Bobby Daffin, and then the fumble recovery by Marcus Washington. 10-0 Auburn. That's pet, isn't it? <laughs> Well, he's having a better time so far than his football team. Oh, sure, he's eating. <laughs> and at the moment, the Razorbacks are being fed to the Tigers. They're trailing 10 to nothing. Take a look at the first quarter stats. It's been Auburn by roughly a 3-1 to one margin. On second down and seven at the 35-yard line. Sterner firing over the middle, and it's complete to Anthony Eubanks. Eubanks into Auburn territory at the 47, a pickup of 18. Covering, covering him on the side is Brad Ware, the free safety, which shows that they don't have a lot of respect for Eubanks. They have man-for-man -man coverage. They rush six. This is the man who's already had 200-yard games. Comes with the in route again. Ware just can't stay with him. Good throw. He comes down once again low to get it. Eubanks, who has been struggling in his last two games, had just four catches tonight. He's got two already for 32 yards. And here is Stinson. Rod Stinson to the 40-yard line. A pickup of about eight. Here's Mike Adamley. All right, Charlie and Todd. Washington State out of battle. They let their undefeated season go out of tubes without a fight. Dejon Gilmore goes in from a yard out. Wazoo and Desert Swarm tied at 28. And back here in Fayetteville, there is a chill in the air, but fortunately the rain has completely subsided now. It's second down and three for Arkansas. At the Auburn 40, here is Stinson, close to the first down, off right guard. Stinson is 5'9", 194 pounds from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. He, as you see, that left elbow is heavily bandaged. He has had all sorts of problems with that elbow this year, and he just came back this after missing three weeks last week. Third, Third and less than one. I was about to say, you got about the length of the football here, and they've come in with the three tight end package. This would be an interesting time, though, Charlie, to go with a little play action because you're down to nothing. This might be four down territory. Everybody's bunched up tight on the line of scrimmage with three tight ends. Stinson deep. It looks as if he's got it. At least where they're going to mark it. Looks like the first down. And he only needed the length of the football. Sterner, the quarterback sneak. First down. First down. One thing I got to give credit to Danny Ford for is that he, he doesn't hide. You know, when we queried him about all the problems regarding his job and everything else, he just he just said, you know, that's part of it. He's going to deal with it. None of this. It's somebody else's fault. I give him credit for that. First and ten from the eye formation. Sterner back to throw. He's in trouble. He's rolling. He better get rid of it. He does underneath. It's complete to Rod Stinson out of the backfield. A pickup of about five yards on the play. Marcus Washington made the tackle. 
One of the things that's interesting with regards to this is the fact that Sterner now is able to feel a little bit better with regards to rolling out here. He's going to get pursued from the backside and look for all the world as if Ryan Taylor was going to sack him. Instead, he comes off to the running back, able to get some yardage and make something out of that play. Interesting thing here, Charlie, too, if you've noticed. Have you noticed the number of catches and fall downs that we've had when it appears that people had room to run? There could be some problems with the turf. On second and six, that is Stinson. Shy of the 30, a pickup of maybe three more on the play. See the turf right here, it's dug up a little bit, and I think that that is a contributing factor as to why you haven't seen the cutbacks or when you've seen the catches, people able to run up the field. If you're just joining us, we had very heavy rain for about two hours leading up to the game. About five minutes into the first quarter, it started to uh, stop, and it's completely stopped now. On third down and three at the 31, Sterner in the shotgun. As time, balls tipped at the line of scrimmage incomplete. And Eubanks was wide open on the hook route. On fourth down and four. Well, Charlie, they're, they're looking at about a 40, 48-yard field goal. And so, as I mentioned before, I thought that this could be four-down territory, and certainly it is. The wind does not appear to be much of a factor, although a couple hours ago, just as I say that, there's a gust of wind blowing in our direction. So they are going to go for it on fourth down and three. Stinson is a single setback. And Sterner's in trouble. Sterner is sacked all the way back at the 48-yard line. And a where loss the, of about 16. And where the free safety just decides they're going to come with seven. They have decided that they're going to make Sterner make a play. Watch right here. They're going to come with seven. Coming from the outside, Ware is just a little bit too fast for Sterner. Too bad he couldn't have gotten the ball away because not only now they turn it around, but great field position for the War Eagles. ESPN 2's presentation of college football is brought to you by Honda. Vehicles designed to help simplify your life. And by Prestone Antifreeze. Protect your car in the Prestone Zone. First and ten for the Auburn Tigers at their own 46-yard line after the 17-yard sack on fourth down. The Tigers with the 10-0 lead in excellent field position. DeMontre Carter in the eye formation, the tailback, and here's a long pass down over the middle intended for Tyrone Goodson, but it was overthrown at the 15. You're looking at Brad Ware, the safety who made the sack. Take a look at the free safety back here. The tight end is going to come up here and he's going to draw the free safety and that's going to enable the post and take away the defense in the middle of the field. They got exactly what they wanted. Watch the free safety jump the tight end and there he is wide open but for one of the few times this evening Craig could not deliver it on the money. Overthrew him by a healthy five yards. Second down and ten. Right. Pump fakes. Same play down over the middle. Incomplete intended for Karsten Bailey this time. Well, I tell you what, you got to give Rodney Allison some credit. He decides that he wants, you know what? If they're not going to pay attention, here he comes. He's going to go to the he's going to go to the post route again, and there's no help in the middle of the field, but he just can't quite deliver the ball on the money. All that for naught. There's a flag on the play. So the line of scrimmage retreats to the 30-yard line. Take on the middle right here. Take a look at the holding right there. Grabbing him down. Victor Riley, number 68. That's the second time that's happened, and he's the one that you would document a chart of everybody's talking about his potential first-round material. He's having his struggles. The question about Riley has been his self-discipline on the line. And that time... It hurt him. Second down at 26. And again, Damian Craig throwing long. Downfield incomplete intended for Tyrone Goodson. Knocked away at the last instant by Jeremiah Harper. 
and Zach Pater. Well, they love this post route. We're going to get it one, first one time or another. He just lets it go. But right there with him, stride for stride, is number 32, Jeremiah Harper, and he's able to deflect the ball away. This time they had the coverage, and they had somebody in center field. Harper, a true freshman, 5'10", 177 pounds. So the last three pass plays by Damian Craig have been bombs. Third and 26. This time a handoff. Mark Cooper. Cooper. Cooper is run out of bounds at the 40-yard line by Andrea Moss. Well short of the first down, however. Good-looking run by, though, by a young man who is listed at five foot six and about 152 pounds. You see the smile on his face. He goes, well, I'm just happy to be here. He's somebody that can come out of the backfield, do some good things. In fact, in talking with Coach Bowden, he was hoping that this young man would be Auburn's version of Warwick Dunn. And so on fourth down, Jared Holmes in his 41-yard punting average. That's a high beauty. That will be fielded at the 16-yard line by Jeremy Flowers. And he goes nowhere. 10-0 Auburn, 10-19 left in the first half. Charlie Steiner along with Todd Christensen and Chris Barlow as we welcome you back to Fayetteville, Arkansas. Arkansas on its homecoming. A turnover just killed him. Hit by Jimmy Brumbaugh, picked up by Marcus Washington, a 13-yard touchdown, the only touch of the night. And Auburn has a 10-0 lead, and this is Rod Stinson. Stinson across the 20, he picks up maybe a yard or two. Well, certainly Arkansas has been a little more effective in the running game this evening, trying to shake things up, and I think Stinson's the man to do it. Branch at 6'2", 34, is a powerful back between the tackles. But they need somebody to get outside, and I think that's Stinson's forte. Pick up about three on the play. Let's call it second down and seven yards to go. The line of scrimmage just across the 20. Arkansas has had all sorts of problems running the ball this year, averaging just 48 and a half yards per game, ranking 111th in the country out of 112 Division I teams. Here's Sterner firing. Incomplete intended for Al Herringer. Had the ball in his hands, couldn't hang on. Tough catch coming across on the crossing route. Actually a pretty good throw. Watch at the end of the play. Hits him in the hands right there. Bobbled up, just can't quite hang on. I would guess, Charlie, that this is a night when it's particularly wet. This would be a night for the tackified gloves. Simply because of the fact the ball's going to be a little bit wet. And so your hands, because it's a tight end, you got to put your hands down on the grass. So that's not making any excuses for Herringer. But uh, I think there's a situation where maybe he should consider the tackifies. On third and seven. Incomplete. And Rod Stinson has nothing to show for his effort but a black guy. Well, there's, there's a situation where that wasn't going to get the first down regardless. I think that there's a situation where he just wanted to get rid of the ball and not get sacked. Boy, he paid for it. He got whacked. And so on fourth down, Matt Waite checked Matt into the lineup for Arkansas. Last week against South Carolina, he was busy. Nine punts, average 46 yards per punt, including a season-high 55-yarder. Markeith Cooper is standing back at his own 40. Just did get it away. Not much of a kick. Bounces dead at the 46-yard line where Auburn will take over with a lead. An excellent field position. Nothing here in Arkansas, and ESPN continues its college football coverage tonight at 7 Eastern when the third-ranked Florida State Seminoles try to stay unblemished and keep their national title hopes alive when they meet the Virginia Cavaliers in an ACC showdown. That's over at ESPN. The game is now underway, and here on the deuce, it's first and ten for the... Auburn Tigers at their own 46-yard line. Demontre Carter in the I formation. And now Craig is calling it automatic. And the pitch out is to Carter. 
looking to cut. He's got some room. Carter dives ahead to the 46-yard line, shy of the first down by a couple. Jeremiah Harper made the play. This is indicative of the maturity of, that Craig has had now. He saw something on the weak side that he liked, and again, give credit to Carter for making the run here and cutting up field. Good blocking at the point of attack, but he saw something weak side. He saw this free safety shift over to the two wide receivers on the big side of the field, wanted to take advantage of it, and he was able to by seeing it. And from the I formation, second down and two, Auburn's got to get to the 44. And here's Carter again. And Carter gets to the 44, very close to the first down. Demontre Carter will be the running back of the future at Auburn. But uh, Terry Bowden made it perfectly clear to us this week that this is still Damian Craig's team and will be until he leaves town. When Craig is out, Carter then will become the focus of the offense. Well, certainly at this point, you got to put the ball in Damian Craig's hands. With regards to that, Miles Aldridge, the defensive coordinator for Arkansas, when I asked him to contrast this quarterback with some of the others throughout the SEC, he pointed out that there were no bad quarterbacks in the SEC. And a little quick handoff to Fred Beasley, and Beasley gets maybe a couple of yards right up the gut. Interesting that he, that Miles Aldridge compared Craig to Cordell Stewart. There you see him there in the booth. He compared him in terms of the fact that kind of athletic like that. But his point was, is that, is that, that you can see him right there. His point was is that he didn't think he was quite the athlete, but he actually thought that he threw better, which is saying a lot since Stewart has already had three years in the NFL. Second down, eight yards to go. Craig, ball tipped, incomplete. Tipped at the line of scrimmage by C.J. McLean, the outside linebacker. And C.J. McLean is somebody who's a double-digit tackle guy that they're trying to get now into a pass rush mode. They're playing him a la LT, trying to get him on the weak side, trying to get him inside. Back tries to cut him, fails. McLean gets up. He actually was going for the pick, and it almost stuck in his shoulder pad. Good effort on the part of number 43. So it is third down and eight yards to go. What's impressive about that lead in tackles, Charlie, he's missed two full games. Just made his first start of the year last week. Here's Craig Ball tipped again. I think and I, was, I think it was McLean I again. I was going to say that. Boy, oh boy. Watch the quickness coming off the ball and watch the athletic ability. Makes one move, makes another. Riley certainly has his hands full. Charlie, that's certainly, I, I would have to say, that's the reason right there that Riley already has the two holding calls. If it wasn't McLean, it was Ryan Hale who got the tip. Well, you're right, it was. And so it is now fourth down. And here is Jared Holmes punting it away. It's a high, high, high punt that is fair caught by Jeremy Flowers. ESPN's college football coverage continues this Thursday night at 7.30 Eastern with the weekend kickoff show sponsored by Coors Light. And then this should be a dandy. Number four, North Carolina saw them last week try to remain unbeaten when they battle the Yellow Jackets. Tune into ESPN for all the action. Found it interesting in that game, North Carolina, North Carolina State, that you documented so well. I think, it, I think at the end of the game, half of the plays that, that North Carolina State had were either negative or they didn't get anything. You see C.J. McClain. Hey, man, I gave you a credit for an extra batted down pass, but you are playing, partner. And playing very well tonight. Rod Stinson is the deep back in the I formation. And Sterner's going to throw. He's in a world of trouble. He gets out of it. Sterner brought down at the 15-yard line. You know, when all was said and done, he gained nothing. Well, I thought it was interesting that once, it, once he cut up field, he got out of his element a little bit, and Rob Pate would have none of it. Take a look at the move he's going to try to put on pace. He actually he has some escapability here as he cuts back to the left, avoids Brumbaugh, and now he cuts. Watch the little move here. Here it comes. Oh, yeah. No, I don't think I don't think I'm buying that move. Down you go. He covered a lot of real estate and showed nothing for it. <laughs> when all was said and done, is now second down and ten at the 15-yard line. This time from the shotgun. Sterner with time. Firing sideline. Is it picked off? Yes, it is. By Larry Kasher. 
Last week, Kasher had an interception in his hands, and he dropped it, and that turned out to be the turning point in the loss to Florida. This week, Kasher holds on. This is a long, long way across the field to throw this particular route, which is a short route. It gives Kasher plenty of time, you can see, to come up and make the catch. And that's a good-looking catch right there as he stumbles, gets his hands underneath it. Good call by the official. His first career pick as Larry Kasher is a true freshman from Pritchard, Alabama. And that is the second Arkansas turnover. Out of the eye formation, Devontae Carter is the deep back. And he's got it, and he's got some room. And quickly, the hole is sealed shut. A gain of maybe two on the play. Good-looking open field tackle there by Corey Nichols, the strong safety. Dropping him right there at the 15. You're right, he did have some room to run. Corey Nichols, the junior from Little Rock. Hard on the carry for Auburn. Nichols on the tackle for Arkansas. So it is second down and eight yards to go. You know, we talked about that team meeting earlier, and it's counterproductive to point fingers. But at this point, you'd have to say Arkansas's defense, Charlie, is really playing a pretty decent game. It's the offense that keeps putting them in a hole. And Clint Sterner is seeking help from above. We all are. Down to the 10-yard line. Rusty Williams with his first carry of the night. Nichols again in on the play. So it'll be third down and about five yards to go. The line of scrimmage is the 11. They've got to get down to the Arkansas six. Big for the Razorbacks here, trying to force a field goal. That would be a moral victory on third down and four. Craig in trouble. Craig throwing off his back foot, wisely throws it out of bounds. The closest receiver was Tyrone Diller. Now let's go to Mike Adamley. All right, Charlie and Todd, it took Florida State just 24 seconds to score in their ACC nemesis, Virginia. Travis Miner, a true freshman, USA Today, player of the year in 1996, 87 yards. He sprints away from everybody. Seminoles take the early 7-0 lead, guys. But his, I was going to say, his speed isn't minor. Whoa! George Welsh must be very happy. <laughs> and now here's a field goal drive, 27 yards by Jared Holmes. All things being equal, Arkansas must be pleased with the defensive stand, giving up a three, 13 to nothing. Well, Danny Ford, Danny Ford, take a look at his reaction here. A little bit of body English. Well, okay. We gave it the field goal. But I like the way my defense is playing. Worst of the weather is now behind us here in the Valley of Fayetteville. And turnovers are just killing Arkansas. Can't afford to give away 10 points, especially when your offense is struggling as mightily as they have been. And so the kickoff now by Holmes way deep into the end zone. That's going to be a touchback, and Arkansas will take over first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. NFL Prime Monday, every Monday night immediately after Sports Center at 7.30 Eastern Time. Highlights, analysis, and, of course, soundtracks. And then at 9 Eastern on ABC, it's Monday Night Football, a rematch of last year's Super Bowl. The Patriots host the Packers. Big times in New England this Monday night on ABC's Monday Night Football. First and 10 for the Arkansas Razorbacks at their own 20-yard line. Rod Stinson gains maybe a yard on the play. Ricky Neal came up the inside linebacker we sold John earlier in the game along with Jimmy Brumbaugh making the play. It really helps when you have two inside backers like that that can pursue and make tackles and go from sideline to sideline. That enables other people to loosen up and fill their gaps and do the things they need to when you know that you've got two guys that are great tacklers like that. Jimmy Brumbaugh, who's big tackle, that caused the fumble of Eric Branch and led to the touchdown by Marcus Washington. Good looking game against Florida last week, too, you mm -hmm. see right there. Second and nine, Sterner firing over the middle, incomplete, intended for Rod Stinson. And once again, Stinson really pays the price. Well, he's able to get some pretty good protection here. They come with seven on a blitz, and it gets picked up. But he can't quite get the touch on the ball that he needs for Stinson right down the middle. You can see right there, 
He's a little bit wary of Neal, so he shortened his arms a little bit. Sterner began the night four for four. He has missed, however, his last five passes, four of nine on the evening. For 48 yards. Third down and nine from the shotgun. So they're having trouble passing. They're having trouble running. And now Sterner is having trouble scrambling, throwing off the back foot incomplete. Intended for Michael Williams. And so it will be fourth down. Well, in fairness to Sterner, one of the things that the receivers have to do when it breaks down like that is come back to the ball. Give him an opportunity to get open. Instead, three receivers just ran in the direction of the corner route, and that enabled some people to cover them. You see the conversation here. Take a look down here now. Watch the receivers. Do they come back to the ball? Or are they going to help their quarterback? See right here. Now they need to make the breaks and come back. Instead, everybody is going in this direction. That's just putting too much pressure on the quarterback to try and make a touch throw. And so on fourth down and nine, Matt Waits punt. Floating at the 41-yard line where the fair catch is made by Marquise Cooper. A 38-yard punt, and Auburn will take over with a 13-point cushion. First and 10 at their own 42. Damian Craig, who was sacked nine times last week, had an off game for him, 18 of 34 for 187 yards. Tonight has completed 50% of his passes for 87 yards. He has six career 300-yard games to his credit. First and 10 at the 42, Craig from the shotgun. As time fires incomplete intended for Karsten Bailey at the 46-yard line. Coverage by Campbell, arguably the best corner, cover corner. Two interceptions coming into this game. Interesting that they go to the shotgun in this situation, Charlie, because this was the formation, remember, in that first drive when they went 60 yards of the field goal. Since that particular drive, they've only had 62 yards in their last four possessions, so you got to give Arkansas an awful lot of credit for the defense they've been playing. Defensive coordinator Miles Aldrin. And his linebacker coach, Dennis Kurt Wilson, ball tipped in the air, intercepted. All the way down to the seven-yard line Charlie, by Corey Nichols. It's going to come back. Arkansas was offsides. There is a flag back at the 40-yard line. And you're right, Todd. Offside, defense. Previous five, five artillery. How frustrating when things are going poorly. Take a look. It's going to be C.J. McLean right here at the top of your screen. Watch just before the snap of the ball, he gets off. Oh, boy, that's awfully, awfully close. But the official saw that he was in a neutral zone. And the result of the batted pass and the run go for naught. Ryan Hale tipped the pass. C.J. McLean jumped the gun. Auburn avoids the bullet, and Danny Ford has been down this road before. What a nightmare year it's been for the 49-year-old Ford now in his fifth season at Arkansas. He has three years left on his contract, and there are not a lot of folks around Arkansas who think he is going to fulfill it. Second and five. And again, Craig gets rid of it. Just in the nick of time, the intended receiver was Tyrone Goodson. Man for man with him was Kenoy Kennedy. I think there was some miscommunication. I think that some offensive linemen thought it must have been a screen because McLean comes out completely untouched. Now you see the coverage pretty good right there. In fact, it became a situation to where Goodson was the defender, making sure that it wasn't intercepted. And so on third down and five yards to go, Auburn is one of six in third down situations tonight. And from the shotgun. Craig firing, near side, complete. Karsten Bailey has got it, and he's going to get the first down. They're going to mark the forward progress to the 46-yard line. And there is a flag on the play at the line of scrimmage, but I think it may be against Arkansas. Holding on nope. the offense. Ten-yard penalty. Replay the down. Third down. Foul from the start of the foul. <laughs> and 
side. So the line of scrimmage will move all the way back to the 33. Take a look right here once again, Victor Riley. You see the two people inside. He comes down. Now watch his hands. Look at the jersey come out, and that's what the official sees. Now watch the yellow flag is going to follow right in his direction. That's the third holding penalty for Riley. He's having, not having a life of Riley kind of night. Third down and 19 yards to go. Robinson and Goodson flank to the bottom of your screen. Carsten Bailey at the top. Craig back to throw. Craig is running, throwing on the run, wide open. Caught by Clifton Robinson. And Robinson finally brought in front of the ball. Arkansas gets it. Marcus Campbell with the fumble recovery. Well, there's some poetic justice to that, Charlie, because it's Marcus Campbell that makes the mistake. Marcus Campbell's a defender, and he's playing for the interception. Now, watch what you're seeing at the bottom of the screen. You're going to see Campbell think he's going to make the pick, and instead not getting it at its highest point. Instead, the receiver is able to do that. Hustling behind, I believe, was, not, was number 28. In that case, Andrea Moss, who's able to strip the ball away from the receiver, Clifton Robinson. And Campbell able to come up. This is a great play by Craig. And watch the punishment that he takes. Oh, man. Right at the end, right under his chin. And so Arkansas gets the ball, bites, and avoids a bullet. And Rod Stinson gets maybe a yard or two on the play. One of the differences that you see between the two quarterbacks, and this is in no way to disparage Sterner, but you can clearly see the experience factor, Charlie. Craig has been around the block. He's played against some high-quality teams. He's a senior. Sterner, as, as you pointed out earlier, was a wide receiver in high school. This is basically the third year that he's been playing the position, and so that's one of the reasons why he's been having some of the struggles that he's had. Second down, and about seven yards to go, and here's another flag on the play. A little bit too soon on the move was Chad Abernathy, the left tackle. Before the snap, ball start, offense, half position, second down. One of the difficulties that Danny Ford and his offensive unit has had throughout the season has been the relative youth of his two tackles. Abernathy, who was called for the penalty there, and Bobby Williams, the right tackle. Both of them in their first year at the position. And well, that has caused some more gray hairs for Danny Ford. And you also have to throw in, remember, Charlie, earlier in the in the game, Marcus Clavel, a redshirt freshman, the one who gave up the sack and almost got Sterner decapitated. He's out of the game now. Right up the gut, Rod Stinson across the five and back to about the original line of scrimmage on the play. Danny Ford I think has been under the gun in Arkansas, and his team is trailing by 13. I believe by the offensive tackle, Chad Abernathy, Todd, was more than just a question of real estate. Well, it really was because the penalty, of course, stops the clock, and Arkansas wants the clock running here. And here's Turner throwing out of the end zone. It's complete to Anthony Eubanks, but well short of the first down. The clock continues to run until Auburn calls a timeout. Auburn's able to get the timeout and stop the clock. Interesting there with regards to Kay Stevenson. I would have thought possibly so deep in their own territory, Charlie, that they would have been content just to run the ball and force a timeout. Instead, they really did go after the first down, but came up just a little bit short. And so on fourth down, we will remind you that coming up, the National Car Rental Halftime Report with Mike Adamley. The undefeateds had a difficult Saturday afternoon. Arizona and Washington State have had a terrific battle. And a Big Ten wrap-up. Michigan and Michigan State, among others. And Iowa had a huge day today. I guess Tavian Banks had a few yards in that one, huh? Mm-hmm. And so on fourth down, and about three yards to go, Arkansas will punt it away. Auburn has one timeout left in the half. And the Arkansas defense has played very, very well. They have not surrendered a touchdown. The only touchdown of the night 
came on a fumble recovery by Marcus Washington, who ran it in for 13 yards. And outside of that, the Arkansas defense has held a high-powered Auburn Tiger offense to a couple of field goals. First drive of the game, really. That's what they gave up. That's the first drive of the game, three points. And so Matt Waite will punt it away. And standing deep is Marquis Cooper back at his 48-yard line. Cooper. Fumbles it off. I think Auburn's got it. They do. At their own 48-yard line. Talk about how sometimes when you can be unlucky, ball goes right through the hands. There's two red shirts there, but instead right on top of the play is number four, Jason Bray, the cornerback. Remember earlier, of course, we documented the fact that the ball gets batted up in the air. Interception looks like Arkansas is in good shape. What happens? An offside penalty. A 43-yard punt by Matt Waite. Now Auburn with one timeout left. At their own 47-yard line, Craig from the shotgun. He's going to hand it off. Right up the gut, that's Cooper. And there's a oh. flag on the play late. That's an obvious face mask there. David Barrett, number 18. Face mask, defense, five-yard penalty from the end of the run. I'm very surprised. I'm very surprised. Right here, what's going to happen? Watch the left hand. Oh, boy. Just jerks that one down. That's a... Fortunately, as we pointed out, Cooper being only 5'6", didn't have a long ways to go to the ground. If he'd have been a 6'4", running back, that could have been really painful. It's a good thing for Arkansas. It was only a five-yard penalty. He could have been slapped for the big, the big one. So it's first and 10 Auburn now. At the Arkansas 42, Robinson and Goodson are flanked to the top of your screen. Carson Bailey at the bottom. The junior linebacker, 6'4", 234, who run and do, and suddenly it's 13 to 7 with 58 seconds to go in the half. A rare mistake by the quarterback, Damian Craig, trying to make a little bit too much out of something. It appears that he's going to escape the corner blitz that's going to come from the right of your screen. He's looking left. Now he has to avoid the rush of Barrett. Now right here, Barrett gets him, and the ball bounces loose. It bounces up to McLean, but he gets some help from his friends. Take a look at number 44, Harry Wilson, who is the convoy all the way, keeping Craig out of the way. Craig could have made the tackle a lot sooner upfield without the presence of Wilson. Instead, McLean is able to jump over the top of him, and Craig cannot make the tackle, and Arkansas's defense says to themselves, hey, you know what, if our offense isn't gonna score, then maybe we should take it upon ourselves to get some points. Boy, I tell you, when you're a defensive player, you don't get that many opportunities. He takes off from the four yard line. That was a five yard dive. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, but it was completely unnecessary, but it was styling, and Terry Bowden says, you gotta be kidding me. Up 13, nothing in midfield, going the other direction. This happens, nuts. Meanwhile, at the other end, Arkansas, which has had all sorts of problems all year long, looking for any good news it can get. Boy, they got it but good. 51 yards. And Arkansas is going to call a timeout. <laughs> they can't. I've they, never seen a kickoff team call a timeout. Well, I, 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 I've seen it in the situation where you're talking about an onside kick maybe at the end of the game, but here, this is curious. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for your one night band. Well, C.J. McClain, we told you about. Miles Aldridge, the defensive coordinator, and Dennis Dirk Winston, the linebacker coach, both say he is blue-chip NFL potential, but he needs a greater sense of self-discipline. 
Boy, that was, he has had some kind of first half. He batted down a pass, 52-yard fumble recovery, a five-yard dive, and a touchdown. Take a look. Let's slow it down and see if we can right here where he takes off from. Kind of a Scotty Pippen from the free throw line thing. Look at that. Right there at the four-yard line, he's up. Craig, and he gets the ball again. Oh, wow. That's impressive. Those of you that follow college football, remember Sam Bam Cunningham from USC mm -hmm. who used to make those jumps? That's what that looks like. And Damian Craig, not very happy with himself, realizing that it was his error that led to the score. And so now, suddenly, out of nowhere, it's 13-7. to Auburn came into this game a 16-point favorite. Damian Craig with a look of utter disbelief on his face. Meanwhile, Arkansas, for the first time in what seems like a good long time, pumped along the sideline. Bob Latterett with the kickoff, fielded by Marquise Cooper. And down he goes at about the 23-yard line. Now, this is going to be interesting what Craig and Terry Bowden decide to do here with 51 seconds remaining and only the one timeout. They're at the 25-yard line. Do they have enough room? Do they have the confidence to get down there? Or do they want to risk a turnover here? Because, Charlie, maybe this is a minor point to some, but Arkansas is going to get the kickoff to start the second half, and so that could be a momentum factor. Remember, they deferred. And now, suddenly, Terry Bowden's team feeling... And now there's some... Well, it looks like a false start against the tackle Geno James. Well, see, this is what McLean has, has caused now. He's causing some problems with people now, a little bit shook Get up. False start, offense, five-yard penalty, still first half. tackle Geno James, 78, and there is C.J. McLean, the hero of the first half. There he is right here, knowing that he's blocking a punt. Oops, he gets off <laughs> just a little bit too soon. <laughs> McLean makes him pay for it. Now, why you would take McLean out at this point, I don't understand that, Charlie. And the reason is, is that they only have 10 men on the field, so Arkansas is forced to call a timeout. So Arkansas, which had two timeouts left, now has one. Each team has one timeout left. And Arkansas will go into the locker room, assuming nothing untoward happens in the final 51 seconds. Probably as energized as they've been at the half Maybe all year. I, I would agree with you. And, of course, they can burn the timeouts. It doesn't make any difference unless, of course, Auburn turns the ball over here. But certainly Auburn's a little bit shook up. And, and I would say, Charlie, this is the only thing that I don't like necessarily for Arkansas fans about these timeouts. It gives Auburn a little bit of time to regroup here, to get their bearings and make a decision here. Now with a five-yard penalty, my guess is, is that they'd be content to run the clock out up by six points. But who knows? Each team with one timeout left. Danny Ford said his primary coaching method this week was to try to coach between the ears of his players. It was a team severely lacking in confidence coming in. What does that mean? What does that mean? I want to know. I saw that phrase too. Between the ears, eh? That was a team, Arkansas, clearly lacking in confidence coming into this game as Fred Beasley gets the handoff, and one would think that would be the last play of the first half. D.J. Cooper made the tackle. Well, i got to tell you, though, that, that the defensive personnel for Arkansas, their confidence factor has got to be extremely high. Saying that, so hey, we can shut these guys down. I know Craig took us down there on that first drive, but since that time, we've been able to shut them out. And if we can continue to hold them, to where Sterner, Eubanks, Ed Al can get something together. Who knows? We got a shot at this. Defensive coordinator Miles Aldridge in his second year at Arkansas. And he's got to be pleased with the effort his team put out here in the first half. Second down and 12. Craig will put a knee to the ground, and that will be it for the first half. 13-7 Auburn. We've got ourselves a ball game in Fayetteville. And now here's Mike Adamley. All right, thank you very much. As we begin the second half, Arkansas will receive having deferred in the first half, and that kick is long out of the end zone. So it'll be first and 10 at the 20-yard line. For the Arkansas Razorbacks, and what a fine-looking home pad, huh? That's a nice lead-in. 
Meanwhile, They're practically twins. The figures. <laughs> Meanwhile, it has been a defensive struggle and, and two fumble recoveries, one for each team, providing the only touchdowns of the night. I'm really surprised. I would have thought Damian Craig, after his initial start, he was seven for eight in the first quarter. In the second quarter, they made some terrific adjustments. He was only one for nine in the second quarter. So Arkansas really made some adjustments and did well. And so here is the first play of the second half for Arkansas. First and 10 at their own 20-yard line. And Sterner is back to throw, throwing long down the sideline. And it is incomplete. The intended receiver was Anthony Lucas. And Clint Sterner really paid the piper after he got rid of the ball. Play action fake. Sterner goes back and he gets whacked. Ooh, that could have been one of the reasons why it was a little bit short. Number 95, Leonardo Carson is the one that puts the boom on his ribs. Carson leads Auburn with 10 quarterback hurries. And he hurried him pretty good, didn't he? Antoine Nolan had a chance at the pick but just couldn't come up with it. And second and 10 now. High formation behind Sterner. And the handoff is to Stinson. Breaks one tackle, but he's not going to break another. Rod Ware, Brad Ware is there to make the tackle. Halftime, statistically speaking. Well, Arkansas's offensive numbers are nothing significant. And, of course, the turnovers have kept both teams, really, from getting any points. Offensively, that is. Both touchdowns, as you pointed out, Charlie, were scored on fumble recoveries. It appears that Stinson's injured. Stinson, as we told you, came into the game with a very shaky left elbow, and that appears to be the area of discomfort again. And you know that's tough, Charlie. It's tough, Charlie, because of the fact that, you know, as a running back, you know you're going to get hit on that elbow. It's not like suddenly the game's going to come and all. Nobody's going to bump it. You know, you're always getting down, blocking, catching the ball, falling on your elbows. That's tough. And so Eric Branch is now in the backfield as Sterner is shooting from the shotgun. And he's in a world of trouble. Rolling, throwing, out of bounds wisely. Fourth down and long. Let's go downstairs to Chris Marlowe. Chris? Charlie, talked to both coaches at halftime. Terry Bowden told me we should have put them away, but we didn't. We missed our opportunities. He was going to talk to his team about poise in the locker room. Meanwhile, Danny Ford, he said we have to do something offensively. I asked him if he wanted to throw the ball more, and he said, well, we're going to do what we need to win the game. Back to you. On fourth down and about a dozen, Matt Waite. We'll punt it away with Marquise Cooper. Slips. And he's going to pick it up. He's still on his feet. Hey, he's got a seam. Wow. Marquise Cooper to the 40-yard line. And for a moment, it looked like he might break it. Instead, it was a 19-yard return. Not all bad. Also looked like a bad decision there because it looked like he was going to get whacked. But instead, he, makes, he does a great job of picking the ball up making a nice 360 move and heading up to the center of the field. Take a look. He's, he's saying, no, 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 everybody stay away. He even slips and falls. Now right here, he probably makes what seems a bad decision, but a great stiff arm on Kennedy. And instead of going east and west, he goes north and south. Arkansas obviously anticipating the ball is just going to roll. Instead, Cooper takes advantage of the opportunity, and they're able to set themselves up in some excellent field position inside the 40. So Auburn with the six-point lead, and they've got the ball first and ten at their own 39 when we come back. ESPN 2's presentation of college football is brought to you by Mead Tech Mates. From storing software to protecting laptops, we've got technology covered. And by Las Vegas, it's nonstop action around the clock, and we're open 24 hours. Danny Ford had some problems with what just occurred. He's claiming that Cooper went with the fair catch signal. He says that he should have had no business. Now watch what, what he does with his arms right there. He's going no, no with the two arms, but that could easily be construed as a fair catch. Instead, the official let it go, and the result is great field position for the War Eagles. Carter around left end, and... Andre Carter picks up almost 10 on the play. Andrea Moss made the tackle. This is the fourth time Auburn has started to drive in Arkansas territory tonight. 
and they really haven't had much to show for it. Only touchdown of the game coming on a fumble recovery for a touchdown, as was the case for Arkansas. Their only touchdown of the night, a fumble recovery. There's 51 yards by C.J. McLean, and he has been the only offense for Arkansas this evening. Well, at the risk of being repetitive, everything has been tilting the field for Auburn, but the Arkansas defense able to hang in. Auburn's average starting point for drives for the 45-yard line. And here's the pitch from Craig. He's down. Tyrone Goodson is down at about the 20-yard line. Arkansas, on the other hand, they've started their drives on the average at their own 14. <laughs> That's what I'd call a big difference. End zone, take a look. Take a look at the knee that drops to make sure of the catch. There it is right there. The right knee drops down, hits the grass. That's the official see. So instead of instead of coming up with the first down, farther inside the 20, it's second and three. And the line of scrimmage is the 22-yard line. As they line up in the I formation, Demontre Carter is the deep back. Second down, three yards to go. Everybody bunched up tight on the line of scrimmage. Carter has a first down into about the 15 where Melvin Bradley made the tackle. Now let's go downstairs to Chris Marlowe. All right, Charlie, uh, running back Rod Stinson has a strained left shoulder. I was over there. He couldn't lift his arm above his shoulder. The trainer, Dean Weber, told me they're evaluating, but he will be back in there. He certainly appeared to be in a good deal of discomfort when he came out. Now, the people that are evaluating are never the ones that have to take the hits. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bruise. Yeah, you're fine. No pain. Carter again in the I formation on first and 10 at the 17-yard line. This time the up back, Fred Beasley. Beasley inside the 15 to about the 14-yard line. Jeremy Flowers, a strong safety, made the tackle. One of the first carries, if, if I'm not mistaken, first or second carry for Beasley on kind of a cross buck, something that Arkansas hadn't seen. Interesting opportunity for Rodney Allison, the offensive coordinator for Auburn here inside the red zone to see if they can get a big jump here and get seven points early on. Second down, eight yards to go at the 14-yard line. Pennington is now the deep back in the eye formation. And he runs into Craig, and he is swapped back at the 25-yard line by the ever-present C.J. McLean and Ken Anderson. Clearly, somebody missed an assignment, and I believe the running back went the wrong direction because Craig is coming back for, for a play-action fake, and the, the person, look at the collision right there, just enabling McLean to smother McLean him. Miscommunication the there on the part of the running back, back in this case, number four, number 40, Sin K. Pennington, who had not down, been playing 16, much up to this point, Charlie, and that's a, that's a strange situation to put him in there in the red zone. And C.J. McClain continues to have just a huge evening. Third down and 16. Auburn, one of seven in third down opportunities tonight. And from the shotgun, Craig rolling, rolling, throwing. Whistles are blowing. There's a flag all the way back at the 10-yard line. That would usually indicate as to whether or not they got the ball off. Probably delay of game. I think you're right. Jeremy Flowers, a strong safety for Arkansas, says it's against the other guys. Delay, offense, five-yard penalty, third down. Interesting there on that play, after all the great pass rushes that C.J. McClain had had, they had him back in coverage. I would think that there was a guy a la LT that you'd be rushing every down. That's the eighth penalty of the night against Auburn. C.J. McClain, who leads Arkansas in tackles, and he has played in just four games. He was suspended for two of them. From the shotgun on third down and 21. Throwing over the middle, incomplete. Could have been a flag, no flag. The intended receiver was Tyrone Goodson. Kenoy Kennedy on him like a cheap suit. DJ Cooper, the defensive end, is the one that applies the pressure. Watch at the bottom of the feet. Here comes Cooper. He's able to bust through. Now watch the throw. Look at that. He has to hop a little bit and can't get everything on it that he wanted to, and then enabled Kennedy to come up and get a piece of the ball. And this is going to be a 45-yard field goal drive for Jared Holmes. His longest of the year is 34. He is two for two tonight. 
from 45. He had it and then some. And so Auburn expands their lead to 16 to 7 on the 45 yard field goal by Jared Holmes his longest of the year. Let's give a lot of credit, though, to Jeremy Zills, his holder. The snap was a little bit high, and he's able to make the catch and get the ball down. Take a look at the catch here by Zills. Ball's a little bit off. He gets it down, gets the laces away. Good job by the holder, which enables Holmes to get that 45-yarder. And so now it's 16-7 to Auburn. Barry Bowden can breathe a little bit easier as... This is the case with most who live in dormitories. There is a lot of spare time on your hands. And they got the strobe light effect working over that Go Hogs thing there. And I hope we're enjoying our football game back in there. This is Andrea Moss. And Moss has some running room. Oh, what a fine move by Moss. Across the 30 and brought down at the 34-yard line, Andrea Moss. Now let's go downstairs to Chris Marlowe. All right, Charlie Steiner, here's a man the Hogs could use. All-conference running back, Madre Hill, out for the year with a knee. How is the knee, and will you come back this year? Uh, we really don't know right now. The doctors are telling me that if I was to rush my knee back, that I might be able to tear it again. So basically, we just want to be smart and, and do things right because I'm, all, I'm coming back uh, as, as respected, and I am uh, have all my speed back. So basically, we're just going to take our time and do things right. How First frustrating is it? to sit out the entire year. It's very frustrating because I know that I was the, one of the key uh, players on offense and we're struggling right now. So um, I just try to help my team's teammates in the best way I can. All right, Madre Hill, hope to see you back soon. All right, thank you. Back to Charlie. Madre Hill, who missed all of the 1996 season and so far all of 97 with a torn ACL. And Chris Chakuma, who was going to be the first string running back out of the tailback slot, he is gone for the year with a bad back. And so Arkansas is going with Eric Branch, their third stringer. Second and eight, Stinson back in the lineup, and here's Turner throwing off his back foot, and he completes it to Michael Williams. Run out of bounds at the 43. He appears to be about a yard short of the first down. It's a good job by the quarterback, Sterner, to avoid Marcus Washington, who was not fooled by the play-action fake. The idea is that now, now as he goes, there's Washington right there, but Sterner able to shake him off and deliver the ball on the money to come up third and short. And you can see Washington just can't quite get to him, and Sterner does a good job of shifting the ball from his non-throwing hand to his throwing hand to deliver the ball right on the money to Michael Williams. Madre Hill, Charlie, the all-time leading rusher for a season two years ago for 1,300 yards for Arkansas. That certainly was a gap. Third down and one. Quarterback sneak should be good for the first down. Starter on the carry for Arkansas. Had to get to the 44. They're going to mark it across the 45-yard line. First and 10 for Arkansas. Clint Sterner, he's a sophomore from Baytown, Texas. In his junior year in high school, he was a wide receiver. Played some quarterback in his senior year, and when he arrived at Arkansas, he was their quarterback. But he has struggled in his last two games, completing just 42% of his passes, and tonight he's under 50%. End around, fooling nobody. Charles Dorsey was there for the big loss. Actually, Charlie, it fooled everybody but Charles Dorsey. Take a look as he comes in. Now watch the white shirts on this side. If Dorsey doesn't make this play, look at the grass. He's got a shot. But Dorsey, when he saw the direction of the play, was not fooled, and he was right on top of it. Dorsey, 6'2", 287. He is a junior, and that is a nose guard physique, isn't it? 6'2", 287 pounds. It's certainly got to be frustrating for Arkansas because they had things going their way. Now they come up second and almost 20. And Sterner back to throw. A lot of time. Now he's flushed down in the pocket. Now he's going to run with it. Sterner steps out of bounds at his own 38-yard line. Now... Mike Adamley. All right, Charlie and Todd, number one, Nebraska trying to avoid what Penn State did a week ago against Minnesota, and that's looked unimpressive. Not the case tonight. Joel Makovica breaks tackle after tackle, goes in the end zone, 21-0 Huskers. They've rolled up 247 yards offense already. 16 for the Razorbacks. 
You know, when you mentioned it early, and we weren't trying to be funny, but we saw 291 yards rushing by Arkansas the entire year up to this point. We were talking about the fact that in some cases for Nebraska, that, be, that could be a good half, and there it was. Amazing. Third down, 16 yards to go. Sterner rolling right. Rolling, 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 throwing off the back foot. Complete! Anthony Eubanks inside the 30-yard line, a pickup of 32. Here's the disadvantage for Antoine Nolan of being only 5'8". That's pretty good coverage right there. Look at that. He just can't quite get up high enough. And give Eubanks credit with the left leg. He actually knocks him down. Watch this. Watch the left leg right here. No, he doesn't. My, my bad. He just wasn't able to get up and make the play. But Eubanks has done that time and time again. A very good athlete despite the fact that he doesn't have the blazing speed. Eubanks, four catches tonight, 69 yards. He's their leading receiver, and here's Arkansas with some momentum, and Stinson is back in the lineup. Picks up four on the playoff left guard. Chris Marlowe downstairs. Anthony Eubanks, as you mentioned, Charlie, uh, chasing a number of records, but right now he needs just five catches to become Arkansas's all-time leading receiver. The man he's trying to catch, J.J. Metters, caught 134 balls in his career. If he doesn't get it tonight, he will certainly get it in the next couple of weeks. He's outstanding. He caught five balls for 85 yards against Auburn last year. It's now second down and six. And for the first time in a long time, you get a sense that the Razorbacks are very much in this game. They're getting an offensive thrust going. Here's Sterner rolling to his left. He's in trouble. Throws it out of bounds. Good heads-up play by Clint Sterner. A good pursuit on the part of nose tackle Dorsey, who just would not give up. And, of course, running to his left being a right-hander, he just can't adjust his body and get the ball where he wants to. Relentless pursuit forced him to throw that ball away on the 25-yard line here. Third down and about six. Interesting to see what the call is going to be from the sidelines. Seven minutes and seven seconds to go in the third quarter. Well, with Todd Christensen and Chris Marlowe, I'm Charlie Stutter, and welcome to Arkansas. We've got a good one going. Sterner from the shotgun. Firing over the middle, incomplete intended for Anthony Lucas, a catchable ball at the 10-yard line. That certainly was, Charlie, and that's what the frustration of Danny Ford was talking about. And my receiver's going to show up. Lucas hasn't had a ball all game, and now's his opportunity with the deep slant, single coverage. There's the ball, goes right through his hands. Sterner has people in his face. He delivers the ball on the money. You can see the frustration of the quarterback. Lucas has to come up with that. Lucas is staying 6'4". The cornerback Casher is about 5'9". And this is going to be a 42-yard field goal drive for Todd Lanarette. His longest this year is 47. Hash mark to the right. Not... Well, it came back in and just circled outside. It started wide and didn't hook enough. It's been a long night for Danny Ford. Well, this, this certainly falls under the heading, Charlie. If I don't have bad luck, I have no luck at all. And Danny Ford watched him finally get an offensive drive, and he forces him to his knees. And so the Razorbacks hang tough, but miss a 47-yard field goal try, and Danny Ford is trying to keep the emotional level on his sideline at a fever pitch. And it has been a long night for those Razorbacks. On the other side of the ball. Auburn with the 16-7 lead. Devontre Carter lines up as the deep back in the eye formation behind Damian Craig. First and 10 from the 26. And here's Carter. Carter has some room across the 30-yard line. A pickup of about five on the play. Jamel Harris, the linebacker, made the tackle. Montre Carter, it's interesting that this is the kind of tailback you're seeing more and more of. And that is, is that everybody wants to try and get the Warwick done. You want to get that, that low center of gravity quick, catch the ball out of the backfield kind of guy. Through freshman, 5'11", 174 pounds. And an automatic 
being called by Damian Craig at the 30 yard line second and five. Here's Carter this time running right. And he is smashed down at the 39 yard line by Norman Nero. <laughs> Offensive line coach Rick Trickett said last week going into the Florida game we beat Florida if we rush for 150 yards he said after the game we came up 178 short <laughs> offensively their running game with the nine sacks last week minus 28 yards 178 short they're doing a little better tonight third down and five it's nice that he has a sense of humor about it Goodson, Poor, and Robinson trips to the left. On third and five from the shotgun, Craig firing over the middle. Wide open is Karsten Bailey. And they are not going to get him. Flag on the play in the end zone. Charlie, that's going to be an excessive celebration. Craig makes the throw, but for some reason, Arkansas spread out with a four wide receiver situation. Dove into the end zone, unsportsmanlike conduct. 15 yards be, from the 18 yard line will be thrown after. So they flag him for the dive. Bailey gets reprimanded by his coach, but Bailey's saying, hey, wait a minute, you know what, you didn't have to go all that way, I did, I was excited about it, what can I tell you? Actually, what he's telling his coach right there is, coach, I really feel like they should not legislate against emotion, what do you think? <laughs> I don't think the conversation is quite as philosophical oh, no? as that you at the You don't think it's quite that oh, esoteric, do you? No, I think not, but so the extra point try will be from the 25-yard line, a 35-yard extra point try. Where's Jared Holmes? Got it anyway. The kick is good. Auburn 23-7. What happens here is you're in the gun. He's got the situation. Watch here. The safety is going to come up and he is going to vacate this area. That makes for a little bit of a move here, and it's really unfair to Marcus Campbell because it's gonna put him on an island with everybody coming. There's nobody in center field, and with his great speed, he is just gone. And once again, when you're in the shotgun, Charlie, you have the opportunity to see the entire field. Damian Craig sees what's coming. He's able to look to his right, and he says, boy, I've got time, delivers the ball, and the rest is the blazing speed of number five, Karsten Bailey. Dives into the end zone, they get excited about it. Everybody jumps up and down. It costs them 15 yards, but it really doesn't cost them much at all because Holmes is able to put it through. And Damian Craig, after the struggles that he had in the first half, particularly the fumble that led Arkansas back in this game, now clearly is ultra excited about this. This is, this is probably the fastest he's run the entire game to get to his wide receiver to thank him for delivering the big blow. And I don't know. I got I have problems with that penalty. I that didn't uh, seem to be terribly here. excessive. You had a guy right on his tail. You, know, you don't throw out a, a base runner who slides head first into first base. He got himself into the end zone. Well, no harm, no foul as it turned out. Here's Arkansas coming out. And on Terry Moss. Coming up later as soon as Todd and I and Chris are done. 24th ranked Air Force Falcons try to rebound from their first loss of the season as they meet the San Jose State Spartans. That's coming up at about 9 o'clock Eastern time or as soon as we are done, whichever comes first. Well, so much for that penalty discussion. <laughs> well, well I, you know I agree with you. I'm not going to disagree. I, I, well, thank you, Tom. No. <laughs> Here's Rod Stinson. Stinson across the 10, maybe a pickup of two on the play. To, to, go, to go along with what you were saying, you know, if they have, like in the old days, you know, when Philadelphia used to have their roll six and the Washington Redskins had their fun bunch, you know, if it's choreographed, okay, throw the flag. But, you know, when you're trying to legislate in motion, then you're guessing. No, nobody's Kreskin out there. Nobody can read the future. He well, also had a couple of guys on his tail yeah. at the time when he, when he dove in. Second well, down and eight. As it turned out, no harm, no foul. No harm and a foul. 
And here is Sterner firing over the middle, and he completes it to the tight end, Joe Dean Davenport. Just short of the first down, but maybe a yard. 6'7", 252, his feet went out from under him. If he could have just caught it and turned around, he'd have the first down easily. But unfortunately, the turf is a bit of a struggle, and particularly for a young man like Davenport, who's not had his opportunities. I believe that this is his second catch in the chart. Second catch of the night, and just his sixth of the season. Third down and less than one. Got to get to the 20, and the ball resides just inside the 20. Quarterback sneak, and Sterner's got the first down. Now let's go to Mike Adamley. Mike? All right, Charlie and Todd. Washington State had problems earlier on against Arizona. Ditto for Washington against Oregon State here. Quarterback Tim Alexander to Mike Jaycott, the fullback. Nine yards for the score. They are tied at 10 at the half. Guys? Beavers. The Beavers, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, they're tough up there in Corvallis. And this sudden burst of interest in yeah, I, I'm, Oregon State. I'm from, I'm from Eugene, Oregon, man. Yeah. About a half hour south, grew up there. I, come on, let me be animated for him. <laughs> Those cool black uniforms, too. First down and 10. Oh, Stinson is smeared at the line of scrimmage by Takeo Spikes, 55. See why he's a Butkus Award semifinalist. And then he ends up getting whacked by Rob Payton, the celebration. No game, second down 10 for Arkansas. Think, think about Takeo Spikes. You know what? It seems like week in and week out, Charlie, we see some outstanding inside linebackers, and Spikes is no exception. We documented his 75 tackles coming into this game. But his mobility and his ability to go side to side is what is going to give him an advantage when he gets to the next level. He's not just a straight-ahead plug-the-hole kind of guy. On second down and 10, Arkansas is going to call themselves a timeout, and Danny Ford is just wondering... What is going on here? Let's go down to Chris Marlowe. Chris? All right, Charlie. Uh, regarding the dive, I talked to one of the sideline officials. He said it was unsportsmanlike conduct. It was definitely on the dive. He said it was a judgment call, but the officials, both of them that threw the flags, thought it was showboating. Back to you. Okay. They are entitled to their opinion, and they had the flag to throw it and to prove it. And so are we, and we have the mics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next Saturday, ESPN2 has more college football at 12.30 Eastern. Purdue and Iowa in the Big Ten. Todd, Chris, and I will be in Lexington, Kentucky. Looking forward to seeing yeah. Tim Couch and the Kentucky Wildcats against LSU. And then we'll wrap it up next Saturday night with more college football. Don't forget, Herb Tyler's got Herb Tyler's pretty decent quarterback for LSU. That's going to be fun. I think they're going to score some points in that one. And we'll see Kevin Falk again, too. We saw LSU earlier in the season. And here's the pass. Oh, it's complete. That's a nice catch by Anthony Eubanks, who nearly busted it. Antoine Nolan with the ankle tackle. Well, Eubanks is the go-to guy. Comes here on a deep slant. You can see the man in coverage right at the bottom of your screen is number 13. Unable to make the play. Antoine Nolan getting in front of him. And Nolan, had he not made that tackle, Eubanks seemed to have a seam headed toward the middle of the field. Interesting about guys like Eubanks, you know, 6'2", 195, you know, maybe 4'6", in the 40. Well, he's not quite fast enough. And I keep saying to myself, hey, you're right. All he does is catch balls and make plays. They're not interested in that. First and 10. Sterner has time. Firing incomplete. Intended for Michael Snowden. First time they threw a ball at Snowden tonight. It seemed to be a one-man pattern. Sterner goes with the play-action fake, and he had only eyes for Snowden. There were three Auburn Tigers around him. And so it is second down and 10. With Arkansas at their own 32-yard line. Trailing by 16 points. The offense has yet to put any on the board. Henderson is now in the lineup for the first time tonight. And there he's got the fake handoff to him. And Sterner is brought down back at the 17-yard line. Well, Quentin Reese comes from the outside. and It appeared that the fullback just didn't get him. Here at the top of your screen, he's going to come 
Number 47 just does an absolutely atrocious job of blocking there. Just lets him by. That's Nathan Norman, the sophomore fullback from Jackson, Missouri, who did the Matador thing, and his quarterback ends up paying the price. And for Quentin Reese's second sack of the season, a liberal arts major from Birmingham, Alabama. Loss of 11 on the play. It is third and 21. Sterner is in trouble. Still on his feet, fumbles, balls loose. Auburn, I think, has it. Yes, they do. Recovered by Leonardo Carson, number 95. The frustrations continue to mount. You're third and 21. You're scrambling out. You're trying desperately to try and make something happen. Spins on the hand, but stripping the ball away from his number 92, Bobby Daffin, who had a sack earlier. Auburn able to come up with a turnover, and Arkansas at this point has got to be a very, very frustrated bunch. Offensively, they're not getting it done, and defensively, they must be dog-tired. First and 10 at the 13-yard line. Devontae Carter gets the pitch out. Carter gets to about the 11-yard line, a pickup of three. He is met by Jamel Harris, second and seven. In fairness to Sterner, you know, what, third and 21, what are you supposed to do? I mean, what are you, Blackstone? I mean, it just isn't going to happen. And so he's doing whatever he can to make things happen. And in the papers and every place else, they're going to put a lot of the blame on his shoulders, which is just grossly unfair. He didn't ask for the fullback to miss his block. He didn't ask for freshman offensive tackles. There are a lot of factors that are working here. And, and plus the fact that he just needs some experience. Beasley and Carter in the I formation. Second down and nine. And here's Carter. Carter to the 10. And down there. Pickup of about three. Third down. And about six to go. Jamel Harris again in on the tackle. Probably the last play of the quarter. Auburn content to let the clock run down. Seven, Auburn. Craig aware of that as he goes over to the sidelines to discuss what they want to do here, third and seven. As we have come to the end of the third quarter, and the Auburn Tigers and their big lead in the in SEC the West it's Auburn, appears to be safe Arkansas and seven. secure. The big touchdown pass to Karsten Bailey. 70 yards at a 16-point lead. And we welcome you back to Fayetteville, Arkansas, and the home team on its homecoming night is getting pasted pretty good now, 23 to 7. And it's not a lack of effort, especially on the defensive side of the ball, but offensively, they just haven't been able to get anything going. Well, you know what? They have the one lapse defensively where the safety blitzes, they get the big play. But other than that, you're right. Defensively, they have no problem. Offensively, they just have not been able to conjure up anything. So it's third down and seven. Auburn's got the ball at the 10-yard line. And Craig fires over the middle, in and out of the hands of Tyrone Goodson. Well, that's one that they want to want that they want back. The pass. Take a look at the right here. There's nobody there. The safety was supposed to come over on the coverage, and he didn't get over quick enough. And the result is it just goes through his hands. A gift touchdown that he certainly would like back. And so instead, we'll get a field goal try of Jared Holmes, and it will be a 27-yard field goal try. Hash mark to the right. And got it through. That expands the lead for Auburn to 26-7 early in the fourth quarter. ESPN 2's presentation of college football is brought to you by Sierra because now is the best time to change your antifreeze and by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Well, the Warrior Eagle made a road trip tonight and his team is up 26 to 7. Jared Holmes, 4 for 4 tonight on field goals of 36, 27, 45, and 27 yards. He hadn't had more than one field goal in a game all year. It was three out of five coming in. And now the kickoff is high and deep into the end zone. Arkansas will take over first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Now a look at the BMW storyline. Auburn, half of its points, courtesy of Arkansas turnovers, 
Bailey, Karsten Bailey's had a big night. Four catches, 103 yards, including a 70-yard touchdown reception. And C.J. McClain's 52-yard fumble recovery for the touchdown. The only points Arkansas has on the scoreboard. And here come the Razorbacks, first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. And Sterner up over center, trips to the right. And Sterner's back to throw. Firing over the middle, and it's complete at the 37-yard line to Anthony Lucas with his first catch of the night, a pickup of 17 on the play. Lucas coming into the game had had an 18, over 18 yards per catch, but he only had 11 grabs. His frustration right there as he stumbles, he really feels as if, and I'm sure so do his offensive mates, that if he can keep his feet here, he might go a ways. But instead, he makes sure of the catch and stumbles forward for the first down. First and 10 at the 37-yard line. Rod Stinson, who has been banged up, is back in the lineup, and there is offensive motion number 69. Bobby Pooh Bear Williams. Dead Poo ball. Pooh Bear. Ball start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Pooh Bear. Yeah. Got a winnie, winnie of a start there. Backed up a little bit. Back to the 31, second down, or first down and 15. Arkansas with 11 first downs. All night. Stinson across the 35 gets back to the original line of scrimmage, but there's a flag on the play, and I would suspect it's probably holding. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. Well, Danny Ford's just got to be frustrated, not simply because of the turnovers and physical play, but the mental play as well. First down and 10, make your block, see if we can get in a position where we're second and short instead it's a holding call, and now we have to come up with another long yardage situation. And you, know, you have the arms folded, and you're thinking about it. What, what can be done here? What exactly can be done to stop the bleeding? It becomes frustrating. It's a domino effect. And recent history does not paint a happy picture for Arkansas as the Razorbacks have been outscored in the fourth quarter this year, 76 to 17. So it's first and 28. Here's Sterner firing sideline. Caught, yes, by Michael Snowden. Up to about the 27-yard line, a pickup of six, second down, and still a healthy interstate drive. Nice throw by Sterner. Look at this. Boy, he has to put a lot of heat on this ball. Snowden able to come up with a catch. Actually, that wasn't bad coverage either, but again, a long way across the field for that throw for Sterner. He's able to deliver. Picked up eight on the play, second down and 20. The line of scrimmage, Arkansas's 27-yard line. Rod Stinson in the backfield with Sterner in the shotgun. Sterner throwing long. Eubanks incomplete at the 45-yard line. Well, in this case, Brad Ware was not going to take any chances, and at 6-2, he's not somebody that's going to be out-jumped or out-physical by Eubanks. He's there on the coverage, and this is the last time they ran this corner route. Able to out-jump, but in this case, where even with the stumble, gets up and says, no, I'm going to bat this thing away even if I can't come up with it. Brad Ware is a very tall cornerback, 6'2 and 194 pounds. He leads the team with four interceptions. He has eight picks in just a year and a half under his belt at Auburn. He has a tremendous younger brother, very athletic, named Tupper, very flexible. He's going to be terrific. He can take a beat and get it. And here's Sterner's pass, and it's complete to Eubanks. Eubanks steps out of bounds just about a foot short of the first down. Perhaps with the mark, he may get the first down. Anthony Eubanks with his seventh reception of the night. I, I, Charlie, they have to go for it here, down 19 points. Sterner able to make, make something out of it as he rolls to his right, gets Eubanks the ball. Now, he has to know where he is, just cut up field instead. Right here, he steps out of bounds just short of the marker. Lower your shoulder, see what you can do. That's the unofficial marker. As the chains will be coming in from the far side of the field. Here they come. The game began 
been in a very intense downpour. It has cleared up quite nicely. It's cool. And a first down. It's an Arkansas Razorback first down. That's All actually right. a very comfortable night. And so they had expected a crowd of upwards of 50,000 here. Not all of them showed up because of the inclement weather. And then many of them started to leave. But the Razorbacks now have the ball first and 10 at their own 47-yard line. Eubanks now with his third 100-yard. You know, there are the some season. things I just don't get. <laughs> And Eric Branch is right up the gut for maybe three to the 50. And neither does Danny Ford. Branch on the carry for Arkansas. Front ball made the tackle for Auburn. It's a game of three. Marcus Washington and K.O. Spikes were in on the tackle. You just get a sense Danny Ford is not enjoying himself. We got that sense in talking to him on the telephone the other day. And... And as you said right at the top of the show, Todd, this whole question about joy. There was no joy on the sideline, and, and football is all about that kind of joy. The pass is nearly picked off by Rob Pate. So it is third down now and about seven. Well, I think part of his frustration, or I should say a great deal of his frustration this evening, is it's not as if they're 19 points worse, even though the scoreboard indicates that. It's just that in crucial situations, they had a fumble or they had a turnover or they had a missed assignment. It's just, it, it, it's always a matter of inches. It's not as if, you know, they're just completely outclassed. He can see that they can play with these people, but again, you know, it's just little subtle things that they're just not quite getting done. Trips to the left on third and seven. Sterner from the shotgun. It's out of harm's way, fires, and it's complete to Michael Williams, but there's a flag on the play near where the reception was made. They might call Williams for pushing off. This might go the other direction. The pass was complete to Williams, and there is a flag. And the referee, Mac Gentry. Or it could be holding. Good call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right here is where it's going to happen. Take a look. When it breaks down, once again, you got to come back against the grain. And there you can see all over him, of course, there is number, is number 13, Antoine Nolan. Had a hold of the jersey and everything else. It appeared that there might have been a little bit of a push-off. But in the hand fighting, the official decided to throw the flag against Nolan. And so it is first and ten for Arkansas, mounting their second serious drive of the night. Here's Sterner, rolling right, rolling, throwing off his back foot out of bounds wisely as all of his receivers were well covered. And Antoine Nolan is the one that's in his face. He said, well, okay, you know, I'm going to get the holding call. Let me see if I can rush the passer. So that's what he did. Got right in the face of Sterner and forced that incompletion. K.O. Spikes put on a pretty good rush and forced the issue. Nice quaff. All right. Nice quaff. Got that what Tavian Banks look. Yeah, huh? that's right. That's right. Banks is the one with the blonde hair. I think it's Ned. Oh, yeah. Completely. You bet. Second down and 10 at the 31 yard line. There's a flag. Is there. I don't know what that. It's not too much time. Let's see what it is. Charlie, that's something you and I have seen a couple of times. They had 12, 13 people in the huddle. And then, and then when two or three go off, that's what the official saw. What else can go wrong for Danny Ford tonight? Second down, 15 yards to go at the 36 down. Hey, at this point, don't ask. <laughs> Second and 15, trips to the right. One flanker up top to the left. Here's Sterner firing underneath, and it's complete, I believe, to Michael Williams. It was Williams at the 35. No gain, really. Third down. One thing they have to be happy with, though, in this particular drive is that Sterner has shown an amazing ability. Maybe not that amazing, but to be able to roll out left and right and to escape a little bit. I, I don't think that people really thought of him as terribly mobile, and, of course, a lot of that has been for survival. 
He's made some pretty nice throws on the run, I'd say. So it's third down and 14 to go. And just then, Arkansas calls a timeout. 26-7 Auburn. Late in the ball game. It's been a long season and a long night for Danny Ford. Be sure to catch the Danny Ford show every Sunday night from 5 to 6 p.m. The Razorbacks night sponsors of the Danny Ford show, including Alcorn, Dillard's, Energy, Nancy Bay, Tennessee Health System, Sonic, Stevens, Tyson, Do you get a sense you'd rather be someplace else? Do, do you, are you reminded, Charlie, of, I believe it was the, it was a Monday night game when Don Meredith said about Don Coryell, this is a man with a migraine. <laughs> <laughs> it is third and 14, and here's Sterner's pass over the middle, and it's complete to Anthony Eubanks down to the 20-yard line, and that's enough for a first down, a pickup of 15 yards on the play. And good for Sterner, he made him pay. Auburn decides to come up on the blitz, they come with seven, he gets the slant route to his key man Eubanks right here. Man for man coverage makes the catch, avoids a man right there in the middle, able to stumble forth for the first down. Good throw here, puts the ball right on the money in the middle of the field, and Eubanks does the rest to get him the first. Eubanks, who'd been struggling over the past two games with just four receptions, now has seven tonight for 116. Now let's see if Arkansas can put it into the end zone. Here's Sterner's pass nearly picked off. Now let's go to Mike Adamley, Mike. All right, Charlie and Todd in Corvallis on their opening possession of the second half. Washington drove the length of the field, capped off by this two-yard Rashawn Sheehy run. He has now rushed for over 100 yards in four straight games. Huskies by seven. Beavers are hanging in, though. <laughs> Auburn 26-7 here with 10.05 to go in the game. Hey, which one of your buddies is it that goes, Sheehy? Which one of that? It's a sports center guy. Come on, who is that? Which one? I, I can't get up that. Oh, okay. I know you can't. I said it's one of your buddies. Pass over the middle. It's incomplete intended for Michael Williams at the 15. I, I'm not sure. It looked to me like he had two guys running slants. You can see the look on Sterner's face. Both both receivers. Watch the middle of the field. The pass intended for Williams incomplete. Taylor to there's the slant and there's the slant. Both guys are in the same spot. And when you saw Sterner step forward and want to know what the deal is, that's why he was a little bit confused. Third down and 10. Anthony Lucas flanked out to the left. Trips to the right at the bottom of your screen. Here's Sterner firing toward the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for Michael Snowden. Fans calling for interference. There is no flag. Now, Charlie, I know this sounds bizarre, but this is not unreasonable here, 26 to 7. With about 10 minutes left in the game, if you kick the field goal, that puts you within 16, which is two scores. You're going to have to get the three scores at some point, and here, fourth and 10, not unreasonable to think about kicking a field goal, but... They're going to go for it. Yeah. They'll go the more conventional route. I guess the feeling is they haven't scored a touchdown offensively all yeah, night, well, and then to expect to come... Food for thought. Two touchdowns and a couple of deuces for extra points. So on fourth and ten, here's Sterner. Trips to the right side. Sterner, back to throw. Throwing toward the end zone. You the touchdown. Wow. A 20-yard touchdown pass from Sterner to Anthony Eubanks. The first offensive touchdown of the night. And Arkansas is within 13. What's surprising about that, Charlie, is that Auburn in the past, remember on those third and fourth down plays, have been coming with everybody. And this time, they only came with three guys covered with eight, and they still can't get Eubanks to the corner. That's interesting. And here's Todd Latteret for the extra point. And he's got it. 26-14. The Razorbacks ain't dead yet. And we've been talking about their inability to get the ball in the end zone. And on this drive, Sterner has been nothing short of spectacular. Fourth and ten. Everybody knows who they're going to go to. Can they stop him? Yeah, I guess not. Runs that corner route in between three Auburn people. You know what he's going to do. They go with the shorter people. Look at that touch pass in between the two safeties. Sterner was the man this drive, but that's the man, Eubanks, that gets the touchdown. Anthony Eubanks with the touchdown reception of 20 yards. As Arkansas right back in it. As 
Clint Sterner has played splendidly here in the second half. Eight play, 14 yards, five minutes, four seconds. And it appears correct. That's 14 plays and 80 yards for five minutes and 40 seconds. Eubanks with the 20-yard 20, 20 pass. You see the way the ball is set up on the tee. That's the reason Auburn called the timeout. They would anticipate it with just less than 10 minutes left. That, they weren't going to kick it onside, but the way the ball is set up, clearly that's what they're going to do. So Auburn calls the timeout so they can get there, get their hands people on the team. Now, get a chance to take a look at the touchdown here. Eubanks is the man that's going to come in motion, and then he's going to run the corner pattern. These people are going to go back, and one of the receivers, one of the defenders is going to come up. And how he's able to find the gap between these three Auburn people, it just makes no sense. But there it is, and there's the gap wide open, and Sterner puts it right on the money. It looks as if he just kind of invaded the Bermuda Triangle. Here I am, I'll take it. So Anthony Eubanks has had just a magnificent night. As I told you, he's been struggling over the past couple of games. But he has had a big time night. Eight receptions for 136 yards, 17 per catch, and the touchdown. Chuck, Chuck, I'm, I'm not so sure here that they don't want to just adjust the ball and kick. I mean, they've had really, essentially, Auburn's offense, their key offense, has been one really long play. They should have some confidence in their defense. Kick it deep. We think we can we can go three and out here. We got a little, little momentum, and there's just a little less than 10 minutes left, but. Deontay. Oh, did he pay for it? Number 85, Jeremy Hand. There is time left, but Arkansas has no timeouts remaining. Doesn't get quite the big hop. Hand is able to make the oh. catch, and he pays the price as he gets absolutely whacked by Jamel, by Jamel Harris. Harris. And so Arkansas, Arkansas trailing 26 to 14. Auburn sitting pretty in the SEC West. They've got the ball first and 10 at the Arkansas 45-yard line. But now here there's big-time pressure on their defense because they've, they've essentially got to go three and out here. They give up 15 yards, and Auburn's in field goal position. Pitch out to Devontae Carter, who has some running room and trips and falls at the 38-yard line. Coming up at the top of the hour, as soon as we are done, 24th ranked Air Force Falcons the Spartans of San Jose State. As soon as we are done here in Fayetteville, 9 20 to go in the fourth quarter. Second down and three. This is going to give Carter an opportunity to show his wares. The freshman that everybody had been talking about down in Auburn is the back of the future. Certainly going to get his opportunities here. Well, one of the weaknesses, of course, for Auburn this year under Terry Bowden has been the running game, and that's Fred Beasley, who gets maybe a couple, but he is gang-tackled at about the 37, a couple of yards shy of the first down. He is going steadfastly with his passing game. He says, look, we've won six of seven doing what we're doing, and we're not about to change now. This However, they've got to run it out with 840 to go. Good opportunity, though, here for Terry Bowden and Rodney Allison to go up top. Arkansas has got to take some chances. they got to jam eight, nine people in here. Great opportunity here for a play action to get a big play for Craig. Third down and two. Carter around right end. Gets out of bounds, and he's got the first down. Norman Nero runs him out of bounds. Auburn tonight has about 290 yards of offense and about 60 of them rushing. He, evidently, did he didn't do it. Huh? it. Well, you know what? It appeared that he did, but he must have his foot must have gone out of bounds prior to that. I was about to say that Carter really impressed me with his quicks, and I think here's a situation where Bowden... I think he's going to go for it. That would be a monstrous field goal. And so on fourth and one, now Terry's going to call a timeout. And now Auburn has one timeout left. They've got the lead, 26-14, 8-17 to go. Terry Bowden in his fifth year as head coach at Auburn. It is fourth and inches, and everybody is bunched up tight on the line of scrimmage. And there are flags. I think Geno James moved, Charlie. 
And that would be his second penalty of the night. The left tackle, number 78. Dead ball, false start, offense, to a fourth down, five yard penalty. Take a look right here at the left tackle. He flinches just enough. And once again, the man blocking C.J. McClain a little bit intimidated. Well, the kind of game that C.J. McClain has had, easy to wonder, no, easy to figure out why. Here's Jared Holmes now to punt it away. That's Auburn's 10th penalty of the night. On fourth and six, Holmes heading for the corner. Instead, it will be a fair catch by Jeremy Flowers back at the 12 yard line. Next Saturday. ESPN continues his coverage at 7.30 when Amos Zeroway leads the 20th ranked Mountaineers into the Carrier Dome to take on the Orange Men in a Big East battle next Saturday night, 7.30 Eastern time on ESPN. And Arkansas now with no timeouts left. Eight minutes, eight seconds to go in the game. They trail by 12. Clint Sterner. 16 out of 33 tonight. Eric Branch is in the backfield blocking for him. Gets good block. Passing incomplete. Intended for Anthony Eubanks. And he was hit pretty good at the 17-yard line. Now Mike Adamley. Mike? All right, Charlie and Todd. Back to Corvallis we go. And the Beavers starting to wilt in the face of that Washington pressure and great talent. Brock Hewitt up top, 19 yards to Jerome Payton, and the Huskies have a two-touchdown lead. Guys? It's not only the SEC with the quarterbacks. Oh, yeah, Hewitt's special. I, I think that people forget, you know, when Nebraska went up there to beat him by two touchdowns, Hewitt went out with a hurt ankle I think, somewhere in the middle of the second quarter. Could have been different if he'd have stayed healthy. UCLA with their left-hander and Leaf at Washington. That pass is incomplete. It is third down. C.J. McClain, who has had just a terrific ball game for Arkansas tonight, he has clearly been the standout. He scored a touchdown late in the first half to get Arkansas on the board. He's a player. Last, last drive, Sterner was 9 for 12, 0 for 2 thus far. Got to come up with a big third down conversion. Third and 10 with the line of scrimmage, the 12-yard line. Trips to the right. He's looking right. Now he's firing over the middle. Eubanks has it. First down at the 40-yard line and then some. Finally brought down at the 45. A pickup of 32 and what a night for Anthony Eubanks. You would think that by this point, they'd have a little bit more respect for Eubanks, but look at the man who has him in coverage. It's number six, Ryan Taylor, who's an outside linebacker. He has no business being man for man for arguably one of the best receivers in the SEC, but there it is. Nine catches, 168 yards for Anthony Eubanks. And now that, that, that makes him the all-time leading receiver in the history of Arkansas. First and 10. Razor back to their own 44. Sterner's in trouble. Rolling, better get rid of it. He does incomplete. Intended again for Eubanks, but that was more of a desperation pass than anything else. Ricky Neal was in on the play, and he really put a rush on Sterner. We talked about the experience that Sterner needs to get. Well, he's getting an awful lot of it this evening. With a pump fake, he knows that he's got no place to go. Neal drops him. He's able to get the ball in the vicinity of Eubanks. Heads up play on the part of the young quarterback. And so it's second down and 10. And for the crowd that stayed, there's still some drama left in the 7.24. 7 minutes, 24 seconds. Sterner back to throw. Firing incomplete intended again for Eubanks. This time at the 50. It'll be third and 10. The pass for Eubanks. It's now third and 10. As soon as we are done, Air Force and San Jose State. 7.20 left here. Well, he converted the last third to 10. And again, Arkansas has no timeouts left. Auburn only has one. It appears that Bill Oliver is going to rush with three. And cover. Four wides, two to the right, two to the left. Sterner throwing, completing underneath. 
Michael Williams has a first down. Michael Williams on the second effort, a pickup of 12. Just a little delay route. Able to find the gap. The other receivers pulled everybody off. It seems to me, Charlie, that Auburn is much more effective when they're rushing the passer with five and six and they go man coverage. When they go to that zone and kind of soft defense, Sterner seems to be able to take advantage. Trips to the right. Sterner in the shotgun. First and ten at the 43. Sterner firing over the middle. And it's complete. And it's going to be a touchdown. Anthony Lucas. 43 yards. Charlie with the score 26 maybe the 21 and 704 remaining they do not have to kick the onside kick they can kick it deep and depend upon a defense and now the momentum shift is going to give them a lot of opportunity to win this football game Bill Oliver defensive coordinator for Auburn has to be frustrated with the last two drives the way his defense is playing and Todd Latteret is on for the extra point to get Arkansas to within five. Snap, place, kick, good. Remember, Lucas dropped this pass earlier on the other side of the field. Remember, in a crucial situation, this time he's going to go with the deep route. He's going to make the catch and make a terrific move at the end of the play. Sterner delivers the ball right on the money between the Auburn defenders. He breaks the tackle. There's nobody left, and his sprinter speed gets him into the end zone. And as you said, Charlie, with 7.03 remaining now, 26 to 21, the Hogs are very much in this contest. What was amazing coming into the fourth quarter this year Arkansas has been outscored in the fourth quarter 76 to 17. They have scored 14 points here in the fourth quarter tonight. Well, Lucas right there, avoiding wear and cutting up field. You know he had to be frustrated with the drops and the fact that he hadn't been used. It had been almost exclusively Eubanks up to this point. The excitement of the Arkansas people is palpable here in the stadium. They've got a shot at it now, 26-21 and 7.03 remaining. Seven plays, 87 yards in just a minute and four seconds. The 43-yard touchdown pass to Anthony Lucas, and now Arkansas is as close as it's been since the beginning of the game. Getting some congratulations from Madre Hill, somebody who knows a little something about getting in the end zone. Clint Sterner receiving the hug from Anthony Lucas. Again, Auburn has one timeout left. Arkansas has none. Here's Sterner's kick, high and short, and fielded by Marquise Cooper. And down he goes at the 22-yard line. To get some momentum, Auburn needed a good kick return. They didn't get it, and now all of the pressure falls on that man, Damian Craig. We had talked about it at the top of the show. As Craig goes, so goes Auburn. He has not had one of his good games, Charlie. He's barely 50% throwing the ball. He has the one big throw, but this is where he's going to have to rise to the occasion, take some time off the clock, get a concerted drive for the Tigers. And the Achilles heel for Auburn is their lack of a running game. Averaging only 86 yards per game on the ground this year. Pennington is a deep back. Craig is throwing, and it is complete to Karsten Bailey, and he is tossed aside at the 27-yard line. Well, as you pointed out, Charlie, the Auburn rushing attack has not been terribly effective. You can see the decline through the years right there. 106 in the nation, less than 90 yards. I would think, though, Charlie, at this point, they talk about who's, who they want the ball in the hands of. I'm surprised, too, that Auburn doesn't just go to the gun right here and let Craig take over the game. I know it won't take as much time off the clock, but they got to get the ball in his hands and let him do what he does best, and I genuinely believe he's much more effective than the shotgun. Second down, four yards to go. And here is the referee. Mac Gentry. It seemed like the argument, Charlie, was at the end of the play. The official kept the clock running, even though the man was thrown out of bounds. And so that's what the discussion here is as to how much time should be on the clock and as to whether or not it should be running. Well, they're going to blow the whistle and let it play. 
Now, if Damian Craig was smart, Shauna, there's 20 seconds remaining. He should take his time, and I think that's what he's doing. He's got a chance to bleed off another 15 seconds, but he doesn't take it. Kincaid Pennington looking to circle around left end, and he gets nothing. This is as emotional as we've seen Arkansas all year. This is our second game with the Razorbacks, and here in the fourth quarter, there is some adrenaline in this ballpark. I don't understand in a crucial situation like this why you would have Pennington, who really up to this point, Charlie, has been a non-factor. Why is he in the game? I'm surprised that they don't have Williams or Cooper or the other people that have been marquee players. This is the time here for big players to make plays. Look for McLean and look for Craig here big on third down. With seven to go. From the shotgun. Craig fires over the middle, complete to Tyrone Goodson, and that should be enough for a first down. Jeremiah Harper, the safety, made the tackle after a pickup of 10. And take a look at the eyes of Damian Craig. He says, I'm the man. I know I can complete this. He's going to go with man coverage here. They go with the blitz. A little bit too much pressure on the safety. In this case, you got to step up. You just have to step up and cut down on the margin there, and Jeremiah Harper does not. Gives him way too much, way too much credit. First and 10. Auburn at the 35. Again, the Tigers don't have much of a running game, but here's Beasley, the fullback, and he picks up about four on the play. But again, note, Charlie, that they're going out of the shotgun, and that's where Craig is most effective. If Arkansas opts to go with the seven-man rush, six or seven-man rush in the blitz, Craig is going to be able to see it. Second down and six. It's a game Danny four. Ford. Second down. Six. And notice we Auburn. we talked a little bit about the maturity, the maturity of Craig, and take a look at the eyes and the concentration. He is being much more deliberate than he was in the first half. He understands the pace of this game and how it needs to slow down. That he needs to take some time off the clock. Second down, handoff to Beasley. He gets nothing at all. He's met at the line of scrimmage by Ryan Hale. Hale and Hardy. Now the big call, Charlie, is going to be my, by Miles Aldridge, the defensive coordinator for Arkansas. Is he going to take a chance here, come with six or seven guys, or is he going to come back in coverage? Clearly the corners for Arkansas have struggled up to this point, but you know that you're going to take a chance if you come with six or seven and that Craig is going to find it. My suggestion here, come with four and double-team Goodson. Make them beat us with Bailey here at this point because... You've got to make a decision here, and that's what I would think at this point, arguably the biggest play of the game, that's what they should do. It is third down and seven. We have an injured Razorback. Oh, not that bad as he sprints off the field. Can't Buying a little time. And so on third down and seven. Four wideouts, two to the left, two to the right. Craig in trouble, set! Back at the 26-yard line, but it may be a face mask. It appears that it was, but I'm not so sure. Take a look and see. Is it face mask or the shoulder? If it is, obviously it's the face mask. Personal foul, late pass, on the defense. Previous spot, 15 yards on that first down. Uh, here comes, here comes McLean. Now watch as he breaks out. Watch the right hand. Gets him right in the face mask right there. Both officials right on top of him. Part of the frustration when you have a great mobile quarterback like that is that McLean can't decide what direction to go. Do I contain him and let him step up? You can see the hesitation in his step, and Craig made him just enough off balance to force him to grab the face mask. That may have been a backbreaker for Danny Ford. And the Razorbacks. It would have been fourth and long. Instead, it's first and ten. Auburn at the 46 of Arkansas. Right up the gut, Rusty Williams picks up about five on the play. Norman Nero, Williams, linebacker, made the tackle. Rusty Williams is the leading rusher for Auburn coming into this game. And do you remember calling his name earlier? I think his second carry of the night. Not very many. Two for ten yards. Yeah. So clearly they're doing the running back thing by committee. 
Charlie, Arkansas is still in this ball game, but they absolutely have to stop them here. They can't afford to give up another first down, especially with no timeouts remaining. With the clock running and Air Force and San Jose State waiting on us. Second and five. That's Rusty Williams again, and he gets a yard or two flag on the play. All right, now this is an interesting decision because this is probably going to be a hold. Now, holding on the offense, Auburn. 10 yard penalty, second down. Now here's the reason I say that is because if they take the penalty, then Auburn is able to run off another 40 seconds or so. They might want to think here about refusing it and forcing a third and seven. I know that normally you wouldn't want to do that, but you got to be thinking about where the play is concerned. Pushing them back here isn't the issue. You want to get the ball. Oh, man. Charlie, I, I don't know about that. After the penalty, three minutes and three seconds left. Second down and 16 yards to go. And now the clock continues to run. And yet Auburn... Craig's doing the right thing here. Yeah, Craig's going to call it automatic. Well, even if he clock. doesn't, he needs to bleed some time off the clock. He hasn't been doing that with a play clock, Charlie. And off, Rusty Williams, tackle behind the line of scrimmage, stays inbound. Melvin Bradley made the tackle. I was about to say, I'm not so sure that that was an automatic so much as he wanted to give me the impression that it was to step back and take a look at the play clock and say to myself, okay, I can bleed as much off of this as I can. Third down, Auburn. So meanwhile, the clock continues to run, and there is nothing that Danny Ford and the Razorbacks can do about it. Well, the clock has stopped here. Well, it starts up again. Third and 15. Now, Craig knows that he can bleed it all the way down to two minutes before he makes his play. 15 seconds left on the play clock. We well, see it in the corner now. 10. Third down, 15. Rusty Williams short of the first down to the 41 yard line. It'll be fourth down and five as Ken Anderson, who came out of the game just a moment ago, shaken up makes the play. Now here's what I'm talking about, Charlie. What they're going to do here, if Auburn is smart, is that they've got a big punter in Holmes that can hammer the ball. Now they can bleed it all the way down to about 115 and not even bother with trying to get a playoff because they can take all that time, move it back five yards, and angle, still have an opportunity to angle the ball out inside the 10. So I, I really, I have to second guess Arkansas on the decision to take the holding penalty because it's really cost them an awful lot of time. Cost them at least 40 seconds. And it is fourth down and down to zero on the play clock. And here comes Jared Holmes, who will look to punt it into the corner. And again, Arkansas has no timeouts left. Then again, though, Charlie, the beauty of college football here is the clock does stop after the first down. And so you're looking at a minute 15, more than likely they're going to get the ball still with more than a minute remaining possible especially the way Sterner has been so hot these last two series well there will be a mad rush on Jared Holmes Jeremy Flowers standing back at his own 10 yard line the snap is good not much of a rush at all Flowers with the fair catch at the 8 yard line so they've got to go 92 yards in a minute and seven seconds. Field goal's not going to do them any good. For those of you awaiting Air Force in San Jose State, they're about halfway through the first quarter, and we'll send it on out as soon as we are done here, and it looks like we may be in for a fantastic finish. Eubanks will flank way out to the left side. Sterner from the shotgun. They're going with a two-deep zone here, Charlie. This is going to be a good opportunity to get the ball down the middle of the field if he can get pass protection. Sterner's in trouble. 
Rolling, throwing, completing. No, they call it out of bounds. Anthony Lucas, the intended receiver, second down. Only needs the one foot in bounds. Sterner rolls right, and Lucas does whatever he can to keep his feet down. Watch the catch right there. Ooh. Oh, man. Oh, okay. Looked like he might have had a little toe tap there, but the official says no. Second down and 10. 58 seconds left in the game. Trips to the left. Sterner looking left. Running. Running. Tackled and could not get out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Well, that's killer right there. He'd have been better off to throw the ball even if it's incomplete because now it's going to cost him time. And he can't afford the luxury here on third and six to spike the ball. The KO spikes, tackled him, and kept him inbound. Now they don't know what formation they need. They're not sure. And it's costing them time. They got to do it. 25 seconds left in the game. Sterner firing long over the middle. Caught. What a catch. At the 41-yard line what by a Hubert Loudermilk. Oh, man, Loudermilk. Combined between the two, and he's hurt. He's hurt. It stops the clock as the chains are moved. But meanwhile, Loudermilk is really popped. That's a great job of holding on to the ball. Ware pops him right in the ribs. And as they take a look at Hubert Laddermilk, who made that remarkable catch, we can tell you about our players of the game for tonight. Courtesy of our friends at National Car Rental, Damian Craig, 13 of 25, 244 yards. As usual, he is the offense for Auburn. And Anthony Eubanks with a remarkable night, nine receptions, 167 yards, and the touchdown. It is now out of the hands of Damian Craig. Let me say this, though, Charlie, at this point, Clint Sterner with his first career 300-yard game. He has thrown for 327 yards. Half of that, or over half of that, rather, in the last two drives. And pretty near half of that to Anthony Eubanks. So meanwhile, as they continue to look at Hubert Latterman. Now, now, despite all of this, this is where Arkansas has to be up to the line of scrimmage because they know go. that as soon as he comes off the field, the clock is going to start because the chains are already set up. As they continue to look at Latterman, don't know what the injury is, but he is still having a difficult time even standing. Well, I, you know what? One, one of the things, surely, was that he got the wind knocked out of him. I mean, he got smacked right in the chest. His chest was exposed. As, and sure. still managed to hold on to the ball. Yeah, I was going to say that, that, that that's courageous. That, that's where take a, in the film room. This is where his teammates are going to go. That's the way to go. Hubert, take a look at the end of the play. Watch the catch and watch the shot that he takes from where right in the exposed chest catch pow right there. He takes that right in the shoulder and the chest area. Ouch. Yeah, he took a pop from Brad Ware who's 6'2 and 194 pounds. Loudermilk is 5'11, 179. Remember, Loudermilk was the had the lone touchdown against Florida, the game that you and I did about mm -hmm. a month ago on a tremendous catch in the end zone. It's not often that the cornerback is considerably bigger than the wide receiver. One thing's for sure, though, Charlie, the debate that Danny Ford had at the beginning of this game, are your wide receivers going to show up? I'd say they did. Today. They did tonight. Yep. Absolutely, they did. And here's Sterner. Clock is gone. Sterner in trouble. In trouble, gets out of trouble, running out of bounds, and he is able to get out of bounds. And the clock stops with seven seconds left. But that play cost 12 seconds and gained maybe a yard. Well, once again, it's the experience factor that we're talking about, Charlie. He steps up in the pocket and just airs it out. You got to do it at that point. Air it out and give it a shot or throw it at the feet of somebody to stop the clock because he was very fortunate there. If he's tackled in that situation right there, game's over. Now he at least has the opportunity to throw a Hail Mary. And with seven seconds, Auburn calls a timeout. timeout. They are Auburn. using their last timeout. 
And now let's go to Mike Adamley. Mike. All right. We'll take it back. It is second down. Oh, Indian giver. And Ten yards to go. <laughs> Three years ago, when Arkansas hosted Auburn here in Fayetteville, the Razorbacks got off to a huge lead. Barry Bowden couldn't bear to look. But then Auburn came storming back. From 30 to 3 to 30 to 27. Arkansas held up that night. Auburn had an onside kick and a long field goal try that just didn't go far enough. So meanwhile, Arkansas is trying to come with some last second magic here. Second down and 10, seven seconds to go. They are at their own 41 yard line. Trips to the left side. Sterner throwing the Hail Mary. That will be batted down. A smart play by Brad Ware. Time has run out on Danny Ware, or on Danny Ford. And our final score here, Auburn 26 and Arkansas 21. For Todd Christensen and Chris Marlowe, I'm Charlie Steiner. Up next, Air Force at San Jose State. This has been a presentation of ESPN, your worldwide leader in sports. All right.